Hey, peace, love, and light, my beautiful, beautiful Scorpios. Oh my God, I've missed y'all like crazy. It's been a little minute since I have tapped in. And um, Spirit was like, go on and give them a reading. Go on and tap, check the temperature, see what's coming in, going out, going on with my beloved Scorpios. Uh, today is 5-5. Five, five, and um, I'm absolutely feeling this energy of renewal, you know, of rejuvenation, of new energy, um, enlightenment, clarity. Um, there's this sense of knowing the direction in which you're going. I think in the past you was unsure, there was uncertainty, but now there's more of this knowingness in terms of the direction you're going in your life, you know, where your dreams, all those things that you aspire to be and become and do, you know, you're going in the direction where that is. Um, thank you so much for everybody tuning in, tapping in. Welcome to anyone that may be new. My name is Q. I too am a Scorpio. I am also an intuitive. I channel messages intuitively. I'm empathic and I am also clairaudient. So you will hear music playing in the background and they definitely blend beautifully with what comes out with the tarot cards. Right now we have Bilal, and the name of this song is called Soul Sister. Um, I feel like someone sees you as their soul sister, their soul mate, someone that they can intertwine with, someone who feels your soul and their souls may be intertwined, like that yin-yang energy, that synergetic energy, that chemistry. Uh, someone sees you as a like mind, someone sees you in your likeness and it's very attractive. It's something that tends to mesmerize them, keeps them interested, it piques their interest. It's like somebody's really looking at you with this warmth, you know, with this strong attraction. And I feel that this is someone that could absolutely be like a kindred spirit, um, perhaps even a past life love. Um, so this is a beautiful, beautiful energy uh, that I'm picking up on. And that, that could be why I was seeing or feeling like this renewal, this this reset. It's like things have been reset. You're back at the beginning. You know, you're in that that ground zero space, the fool. So now you're taking risks. You're being more daring. You know, you're willing to go out on a limb, whereas before um, there could have been some apprehension or maybe there was the sense of stagnation fear, anxiety, maybe some of you all were, you know, really just kind of trapped um, in mental conflict in terms of what to do, what direction to go. But I feel, as I said, that you freed yourself from that, from that baggage, you know, that mental fog. It's like you now have this, this clarity, this illumination. Um, and I do feel it has a lot to do with that, that solar eclipse that just passed. Um, the solar eclipse is what covers, you know, the sun covers the moon. So it's like it brings illumination to the things that may have been hidden. And so I feel now that there's been this, you know, this big reveal, you know, or this big awakening that is transplant, trans, trans, um, that has gone through, you know, that we've just gone through. Um, it's, it's bringing more clarity, if you will. So there's honestly like this aha, this epiphany, you know, and now there's this knowingness of where to go, what to do. Um, so that, that's the energy I'm picking up on initially, uh, just intuitively. But, um, for anyone that may be new, these are general messages. So my spiel is eat the fish, spit out the bones. If it doesn't apply, just simply let it fly by. Do not try to force a story to be your story. Know that you're more than just your sun sign. So please check your moon, your rising, your Venus, your Mercury, your Mars. Just check your other placements so that you can receive a more clear and concise message. OK, um, my readings are timeless. So whenever you see this video in your feed, whenever you feel compelled to click push play, whatever it's like, that was divine time and intended for you to do so. So it doesn't matter the time, three years, two, four, five, six, seven years from now, if the reading applies, then it applies. Okay. So let's go ahead, tap into the energy. I would like to do some house cleaning and, um, and then we'll proceed with the reading. Okay. So let's take a deep dive. Inhale. Inhale. 
and exhale. Just ground ourselves. Get ready for this information, affirmation for these downloads. Right now we have ramp, and this is called daylight. So yeah, there's going to be some, some, some clarity, some illumination. There's going to be some epiphanies or some aha moments. Some truths are going to be revealed. Some, some things that may have been hidden are going to come to light. So with daylight, I feel like, again, this is like the dawning of something. Maybe there's a new beginning, as I said initially. Um, this is that, that energy of renewal. Uh, this is that reset every day. A new day starts every day. So there's a new opportunity to try again, uh, to to put forth the effort, to take the initiative, to set the intention, to move in the direction, whatever it is. It's like the daylight provides that that optimism you're looking for, the strength. You know, the sun is really um, it's a life force force for us for all humans, everyone on planet Earth. So it's very necessary in giving you and providing you the strength you need, even the clarity, the truth. It gives you that, that ability to see things, you know, to illuminate what may have been hidden or to provide the clarity where there was once confusion. So let's go ahead. I call upon the elements of water, fire, earth, air, ether, and spirit, ashe. I ask our beautiful angels, archangels, ancestors, ascended masters, spirit guides, deities, animal totems, earth, mother Gaia, universe source, the divine to shine a powerful, powerful message of love and of light. I call personally upon Baba Ubatala and Mama Oya and Baba Ogun to bless me with the intuition and discernment of my cards. Help me to pick up on the energy, number, synchronicity, and vibration of my cards. And so it is. So mote it be. Ashe, ashe, ashe. So daylight. Daylight in your life. So some of you may have felt like you was in the dark about some things. Maybe there was some stuff that just came out during the solar eclipse that you were not privy to, that you were not aware. Maybe some folks revealed their true intentions or the fact that they were wearing masks. Or maybe you discovered something that was really, really janky about someone and it just put them in a whole new light. Um, maybe there was a situation where you may have discovered there was some folks trying to line you up or set you up for failure and you was able to, you know what I'm saying, to, to curve that. Um, to avoid it because you listened and trusted your intuition, your higher self. Um, right now we have best friend playing by music, soul child. So that's the second time um, that soul, you know, spirit um, has been referenced in these songs. So I do feel like with, with spirit, it's like your spirit lets you know something. Maybe some of y'all discovered some things about someone you was calling your best friend. Maybe some of y'all realized or found out that a best friend was really a hidden enemy, a secret enemy, someone that was jealous of you, someone that was trying to potentially take your man, take your woman. You know, maybe you found some messages or you was informed of some things you may not have been privy to about this so-called best friend. Maybe some of you all have a dog, a cat. Um, that you consider your best friend and you are, um, you know, really spending a lot of time with that animal. Maybe that animal's going through something right now. Maybe I'm hearing like a cat maybe in heat. So you're just kind of like giving them the room, you know, tending to them, loving them, nurturing them. Or maybe you just had a pet, a dog that just went through some sort of, um, you know, procedure. Maybe it was something very taxing on them. Um, physically, emotionally, maybe some of them went through an actual like operation, uh, operative procedure. And so you're just kind of nursing them back. Um, or maybe you're just some of you all are going to meet someone that's going to become like your best friend. You know, maybe you're meeting this uh, divine masculine, the divine feminine or soulmate or soul, you know, someone that is considered like your soul sister, uh, someone that is, you know, really like a kindred spirit, the yang to your yin. 
Um, and so this could be a union of sorts. Maybe you're coming into some sort of very beautiful union with someone. So I haven't even picked up the cards yet and I've been just a yapping. So we have on the bottom of the numerology deck is time out. So the 37, that's 10. We you know that's something's coming full circle. So with time out, I feel like this is saying that the time out that many of you have taken to do your internal work, to heal, maybe to build your wealth of knowledge in a particular area. Maybe you were going to school or maybe you was getting certifications, licensing. Maybe you were studying. Maybe you were uh, going through some sort of spiritual growth, uh, spiritual um, evolution. Maybe some of you all were uh, training for a career. Um, for your career, maybe you were studying. For, I'm heard. I heard someone was studying for the bar, or maybe someone is like a legal aid. Um, so some of you could have been going back for that. Maybe some of you are trying to become like a broker, and you're trying to get your broker license. Um, uh, I'm hearing that some of you could be into real estate as well. So you could be looking to, you know, become, become someone that could be like a realtor where you get your own properties and you're able to showcase those properties. So you could be going to class um, for those particular uh, areas, areas of interest. And and so you've been really just kind of working on yourself in the interim um after, you know, that's the aftermath, you know, after all of the, the chaos, after all of the, uh, the learning lessons, the growing pains, uh, it's as if you went into a very um, protective bubble to, to kind of grow, to learn, to assess, to evaluate, to soul search, you know, to heal more importantly. And that's what you did with this time out. I feel like the time is up now where you could come back out. So it's like you were in hibernation and now that the weather's getting warmer, now that you're in a more centered place, um, now you can re-emerge as someone who's more enlightened. Um, and I say that because this is like a purple card uh, with yellow, the time out. So this shows the time out that you took, you know, to really work on yourself. Um, and not only did you work on yourself, physically and emotionally, but you also worked on your, your mental health. Um, perhaps some of you were like just speaking daily positive affirmations like, I am a miracle and I know my worth after going through a really toxic relationship that weighed heavy on your self-esteem. Um, you know, so some of you had to really nurse yourselves back to a place where you were emotionally strong. Um, and spiritually strong as well. And so you've taken that necessary step to do that internal work, take those deep dives. And now you're more psychically, more uh, spiritually strong as you are physically strong, as you are um, self-loving, self-caring, self-disciplined. So you're also mentally disciplined. So you can kind of like, you know, you're very, I just feel the sensitivity um, with you psychically or intuitively or discerningly. There's this, this heightened level of, of psychic abilities. And with that one, because uh, that 37 reduces to one, the one is the uh, magician. And the magician is very aware. You know, the magician knows the right time, um, the right timing of things, when to set the tone, set the intention. Uh, he could utilize all of the elements um, to manifest that desired outcome. And that's the energy you're in with this 37. And not only are you in that energy of awareness, but you're also ready to strike, ready to take action, to move forward towards some passionate new start or beginning or opportunity. And so we have uh, Eric Benet and the name of this is called News for You. So with this 37, um, like I said, that reduces to one. That's like I'm seeing like the ace of uh, wands energy um, because I feel like this 37 time out just really spoke to you taking the time out to heal after being through something very arduous or some sort of battle, uh, some sort of emotional roller coaster, um, which made you feel emotionally bankrupt. So maybe you were overwhelmed. Maybe there was a lack of reciprocity, but it was like you've reached the breaking point to where something was complete. Something was over. It was a painful loss, but it brought clarity. It brought illumination, it made you think logically. Um, and it made you really start trusting 
your own intuition. With news for you, I feel like the divine was really leaving you little nuggets of information. Maybe a lot of you took that time out to start building that connection with your higher self, to start strengthening your intuition so that you can avoid circumstances like this in the future. So it's really, like I said, that growing pain, that, that you know, taking accountability and responsibility and onus of your walk, of your journey, of your experience. So with this time out, I'm definitely sensing like, you know, now you're about to re-emerge. Okay. So I'm so sorry. I'm like in the zone, baby. And I, it's been such a long time. So I really want to give y'all like clear and concise messages today. So let's go ahead. I didn't even shuffle the cards. I've been just a yapping, a yap, yapping. So let's see what we got coming and going out, going on for my beloved Scorpios. As you know, this is the numerology deck. And we got Eric Benet singing news for you. Maybe there's some good news coming in. Maybe somebody is going to have something to say. I see happy ending on the bottom of the deck as I finished shuffling and then I looked at it. So we do feel like, you know, maybe there's some sort of something happened where um, maybe it ended on a sour note. And I feel like the, the it, it's going to change. Like there's an opportunity for something to change for, you know, um, Maybe if there's uh, no communication, maybe there's going to be some sort of communication because I feel like somebody's returning, you know, with some news for you, something that you aren't aware of. Um, I'm hearing lunar eclipse. So maybe during this lunar eclipse that's coming up, I believe it's on the 16th of May. Uh, and we have the 10th, which is when Mercury goes into retrograde. So this could be someone from your past because I'm getting like the three of cups energy. Um, this is somebody from your past that has some news. Uh, they want to return because they have something to say, but I feel like whatever it is they want to say, it's going to, it's going to be lighthearted. You know, it's, it's something positive. It's not going to put you in a stressed out, um, frame of mind, or you're not going to be like anxious or overwhelmed with this news. I feel like you're going to be kind of happy. Um, you're going to feel enlightened or you're going to feel, a sense of um, elation, joy, perhaps, maybe even, you know, um, you're going to be very, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Flattered. Thank you, spirit. So let's cut the deck, see what's coming and going out, going on with my beloved Scorpios. I have been cutting my deck as of the last couple of readings three times. My nose is itching crazy. So your message is about to be real crazy um, and crazy good. We got 77 spirituality here. So I do feel like whoever you are attracting, both of you are very psychic. That's why I was picking up this energy of you being not just sensitive, um, but also like aware. There's this awareness. There's this knowingness. And I feel like whoever you're attracting is also just as aware. This is somebody that's coming in with some news for you. Maybe you are also picking up someone's energy um, and you can sense somebody's coming in with some news. This 77 double number, I always tell you that I associate double numbers with you and a twin flame, a soulmate, somebody that's like a kindred spirit. And we had the soul sister playing. And then we also had, um, we also had a uh, music soul child, best friend. And so I'm feeling like this is somebody who's really like a very, uh, there's a strong, kindred connection or soul tie past life connection there's something that draws i feel this magnetic pull where you and another person are being pulled being aligned to one another because the 77 it's an all purple card so there's a lot of of psychic communication psychic like this is like cerebral so there's either excessive thoughts excessive dreams lucid dreams um, this is the daydreaming and I'm thinking about you daydreaming and I'm thinking about you like this is that energy and with spirituality both you and this person that you're attracting is absolutely sensitive heightened psychics heightened clairvoyance heightened intuitives there's this and you share this with this person so heavy cerebral activity heavy communication um, spirituality. So some of you all, like I said, have been building your spiritual knowledge, your spiritual strength. Maybe someone that's been um, in isolation, someone from your past that you may know or someone that may feel very familiar um, has just come out of a cycle where they've been building their spiritual knowledge or building their um, building their awareness. 
um, seeking wise counsel, seeking higher learning, um, being in that studious energy. Uh, with that, the, what's on the bottom of the deck is happy ending yet again. So the divine is telling me that, you know, you and a like mind, twin flame soulmate, this is someone that you share a, a strong likeness to. And I said that and we see, bam, first card that comes out is the seven, seven and seven, seven is like the chariot in traditional tarot or the number seven is like the chariot. So this is somebody coming in passionately, you know, confidently being more assertive, being more intentional you know, courting you, showing interest, because maybe in the past they was more passive or maybe in the past they were more cool, you know, uh, acting too cool for school, uninterested or, you know, like they got options or, you know, so this could have been the energy where somebody had to really go back and, and to the drawing board to to kind of meet your fly, match your energy, your vibration. And so now somebody's coming in right. We got Sade playing Cherish the Day. So I do feel like this is a connection um, that you will cherish. I feel like your marriage, the day that you commit, if that's what you choose to do, it's like going to be one for the record books. You're going to cherish the that that connection. You're going to cherish this person. Um, I feel like that's going to be a memory that you share um, all the time because the way the ceremony, I feel the way the ceremony takes place or how the, the, the stars align for your particular ceremony is going to be one that's very, it's cherished, not just by you and your partner, but by other people because of the story or because of the way it aligned the love story it's like almost like if you see Cinderella it's like everybody admires that story because it's it's just a very you know cute love story um where you know this this the underdog the one that gets overlooked is the one that actually finds love by the prince so I feel like your story is going to be one um in the same vibration where other people will cherish the connection or you and your partner will cherish that connection and cherish one another um because it's like you both feel like your your prayer was answered or like a wish or a, 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 a wish came true, a miracle took place like that. That's going to you're going to cherish this person. And with this happy ending, that's why I feel like there's just going to be this domestic harmony because the synergy, the chemistry, the connection in and of itself is very powerful. And we know that because spirituality came out first. And this is seven, seven. So now somebody's coming in confidently towards you. The seven, seven breaks down to 14, which is five. So I feel there's a lack of communication at this time, maybe because someone's trying to figure out how to overcome some sort of hurdle. You know, maybe there was something that happened in the past. Maybe this is somebody, you know, that left you for someone else. And now there's regrets. Or maybe this is someone that didn't reciprocate because there was other people or other situations that was kind of interfering with their ability to connect and build with you at the time. So there could have been other options, distractions, um, but there were certain challenges, obstacles, things that came in between the union um, between you and this person. And so I feel through their reflection um, because I'm getting like that five of cups type of energy with the seven, seven, 14 that I feel like they reflected and through reflecting, they realize the feelings, they realize the connection that the two of you shared. So now there's this desire to communicate. Um, there's this desire to, you know, potentially express themselves to, because they do cherish you. They cherish the connection. Um, we had Eric Benet singing you know, um, news for you. So this person is going to have some news, like there's some incoming news. And remember we saw a happy ending. So this is really like somebody, cause I was feeling like with that happy ending, that was the number 93, which is 12, which bre breaks down to three. So three is like the three of cups. I was telling you, I felt like somebody from your past could have potentially been returning. And so with that five of cups, that lets you know that this person now, after making the choices they made after doing whatever it is they chose to do, it's like they're sitting in regret, you know, because it was not as fulfilling as they initially thought it would be. Or maybe they're realizing they listened to the wrong people or they allowed too many people get into their head or they chose the wrong thing out of ego or out of pride or just 
pure stubbornness. And so now there's this energy where they went in, went, they went inward to kind of soul search. That hierophant is number five as well. So that's like really, um, you know, seeking wise counsel, um, speaking to elders in the family, speaking to some of the matriarchs in the family, like sitting at the feet of the elders and soaking up some of that game, like getting some of those, those downloads, getting, picking up jewels and gems from the elders, because that's where, you know, the, the wisdom is. And so they're going straight to source. Maybe, as I said, some of them could be, or maybe you have been really just in this energy of building your spiritual strength, you know, researching, reading, investigating, um, deep internal reflection as well, which also helps you to develop and build a connection with your higher self, your spiritual self, that Christ consciousness, uh, because you are truly connecting and tapping in direct to source when you do that the, through meditation or through, you know, dedicating that time, connecting with your altars, going to sacred spaces or divine places such as beaches, rivers, ponds, lakes, you know, sitting on, you know, in, in the middle of, of, of the forest, you know, going to a trail, being amongst nature, like those things ground you. So there's the sense of groundedness, the sense of heightened uh, perspective or an evolved perspective, if you will. So after you come out of that, now there's this, 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 you know, this, this more, uh, intensified, this intensified energy, uh, this forceful energy, because remember with spirituality, it's seven, seven. And I always feel like you and the person you're attracting are matching one another's energy when you have dual numbers or when you have synchronized numbers, double numbers of the same. And so being at your seven, I see you in this very cerebral, very psychic, uh, very heightened, um, you know, psychic energy. And I see someone that you are attracting is also equally psychic, equally intuitive, but it is, you know, now coming towards you um, with more confidence, you know, so now there's this, there's this, you know, intensity that may have built up in someone, uh, this confidence, you know, maybe someone reflected, deep dived, and now they're ready, they're prepared. So they're coming in with some news for you. They're coming in to explain some things because that's 77 breaks down to 14, that's five. So now with the happy ending, this is going to make you smile. Like you're going to be smiling. Um, we have Kashif. This is, I just got to have you. Um, so see that? So somebody definitely is coming in with more of um, an urgency, uh, maybe because it's like they've been fighting these feelings or maybe they're afraid that somebody else is going to snatch you up. But it's like this is somebody who's now looking at you like they have they have to have you. And remember, we had soul sister playing. So someone does feel like the connection is deeper than just an attraction deeper than just physical attraction. I should say this is something more spiritual. This is something that that's soul deep, you know, so this is like you're like soul food to them, you know, so there's something that they have. They have to have just like you need air to breathe. You need water to survive. They feel like they have to have you to be happy or to to feel, you know, fulfilled emotionally. So let's see what we got coming and going out, going on. Who is this person? Scorpio is attracting. So the overall energy is 77 spirituality. And we just have 55. I'm sorry, 32, five. So we got music here. So music, this person could also be a uh, clear audience um, or maybe this is someone who's into music. Um, who could be an artist, you know, maybe they're a singer, a rapper, maybe they're a poet, they put, you know, poems to, to music, to beats. Uh, maybe this is a producer, maybe this is someone that plays an instrument. Um, I'm hearing bands, so maybe somebody is in a band, and I'm hearing like a rock band or some sort of Afro-punk band, and my phone just went off. Um, so I definitely feel like this is an energy of somebody who, with whom you could even share the same type of, um, you know, you may share the same if affinity towards the same type of music, same genre of music. Maybe this person, when they think of, um, you know, when they hear certain songs, they may think of you or vice versa. Um, but this person that you are attracting, this 32, the name of the song right now that's playing is Kashif. I just got to have you. And it's, you know, this, this card is 32 music. So I feel like the divine is saying, you know, not only do the aforementioned apply, but perhaps this could be somebody who also just has to have you. And they're coming to this epiphany because this is an orange card, which deals with the sacral chakra, which is about creativity. So they could be, you know, creatives in that regard, you know, artists in that regard, or, 
or this could just really be somebody who's receiving a download when they hear a song. Uh, maybe the lyrics in a song hit home, you know, hit them right in the heart. Like they feel like, oh man, I felt that, you know, maybe somebody's literally hearing songs and shedding tears, um, you know, but this is like, maybe there's a song that you and this person may uh, share together. Maybe they, there's a particular song, maybe that they dedicated to you or they showed you and it's been you guys' song ever since. Or maybe when you hear that song, you think of this person. And so maybe you've been playing that song a lot lately, or maybe this is a vice versa situation where you may have a, a song that this person sees your face whenever that song plays. And so they may have it on repeat. You know what I'm saying? I'm hearing um, Missy Elliott, rewind, like from that song. So it's like they rewind it constantly. Like they constantly playing that song over and over. And 32, like I said, that's five. So this is 32. So, so far you got five, five. Today is five, five. And I posted the, you know, the five, five, five synchronicity. So straight, straight out the gate, I'm going to just show you the cards so you can see them for yourselves. Because, you know, I like to show and prove. So remember, you had spirituality, 77, that breakdowns 14, that's five. And then you got the 32, that's five. OK, so the five, five automatically is letting me know that, you know, straight out the gate, you know, the five is showing that this person is in a space where they could potentially be like, receiving some sort of downloads. You know, there's something that's coming in that's given them a sense of, you know, maybe an epiphany because there's yellow in the symbol. So, you know, that deals with the solar plexus. Maybe they're, it's giving them some courage, you know, they're mustering up the strength, the courage, and they're gaining the wisdom, the wise dome. Um, like I said, kind of soaking up that game from, you know, from maybe the elders, maybe they're listening to some old school songs, you know, back in the days, you know, the, 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 the music was like, they was wooing you. They was, they was, um, serenading you in the, the in those old songs they was telling you how much they love you and what they was going to do to get you and it was never anything about intimacy and sex and all this overt stuff it was like a man was wooing his woman courting her with song with you know with harmonization with with lyrical content they made you feel like a queen they called you queen in the song like this is where they built you up you know put you up on that pedestal you know and so this is the type of music this person could potentially be listening to i feel like they just soaking up game from like elders like if this is masculine energy he going to that uncle that's like 60 something 70 80 years old and he getting game he's getting that that real game i'm not talking about game like trying to play games I'm talking about that game like trying to be a man you know somebody that has old morals and values you know they're going and getting that enlightenment you know that five is the high hierophant and the hierophant is you know like a spiritual teacher you know it's it's where you go to to you know get that higher learning you know get that that counsel that wise counsel so uh, this person that you're attracting I do feel like they're in that energy. The bottom of the deck, we have Adventure 5-5. Five, five. So I can't make this up. The bottom of the deck, we got 5-5. Five, five, and we just showed you the cards. And my little, you know, janky cover, this is supposed to be like in an in, in old, because you know how I like to do Dark Matter series, you know, the blackout. But I also wanted to, you know, pay homage and, and, and give an ode to the Black Moon. And my little janky cover-up keeps... <laughs> keeps messing up but it's all good but so far we got 77 5 32 5 and then we got 5 5 adventure so 5 10 15 20 that's 20 so two so the two is the um high priestess so that's what i was feeling your energy is i feel like you are very psychic you know i feel like that seven that you are representing on the seven seven spirituality card is absolutely speaking to your psychic and clairvoyant and intuitive gifts your sensitivity to those things and i feel your person is more mustering up strength courage being more assertive those things that's the energy i feel they're in and i feel like they're mustering up that strength courage to come towards you not only to come towards you but also to communicate with you because there hasn't been any because we saw a time out so when you're in time out that means you are not going to be bothered by anybody so you got your do not disturb you got your airplane mode you got all those things you've disconnected from the world so that you could do your work and I feel that was an energy someone else was forced 
to work with because there was no communication. And I feel it could have been because you created that boundary. Um, right now we have Jeanne and this is called Hey Mr. DJ. So like I said, somebody going to pop up and be like, hey, how are you? What's going on? You know, hey, you good? What, you, how are you? know, whatever. Somebody's going to just reach out and say hey to you with this 5-5 five, five adventure. Yeah, they're going to take that leap of faith. This is somebody that's going to be very daring. 5-5 five, five also reduces to 10. So this is like, you know, the end of waiting around, the end of no communication, the end of not taking action. Somebody's ready to take action because that 5-5 five, five reduces to 1. So they're going to move forward. They're going to, you know, because whatever they've been kind of like pushing, pushing down or suppressing it's like it, it, it's it's boiling over now you know their feelings are intensifying so now it's like they're ready to take action they're ready to move forward um remember news for you so somebody's coming in with some news uh that one is giving me like that ace of wands i was picking up on earlier and the wands is action so somebody's ready to take action ready to communicate and remember we saw happy ending so there's going to be some sort of happy outcome or something that's going to put a smile on your face or make you feel elated, you know, overjoyed or happy. So with this 55, the divine is almost it's like the divine is telling you, like, you know, be be open, you know, be receptive. Um, you know, don't try to control the narrative. Don't try to control things, uh, but also act from your power. Don't be afraid to to be who you are, be your authentic self, because you have changed, you have evolved. Um, so they want you to, you know, not just um, be open to anything, but just be more mindful, you know, more in uh, more uh, stand your ground. If, in other words, stand your ground, but still be open. You know, you'll be surprised, I feel. So, yeah. And this is also like, you know, like I said, surrendering, opening yourself up. So how this person sees you, Scorpio, is synchronicity 87. So like I said, like mine, or this could also be just like somebody who feels there are um, a lot of things right now that's like making them think of you. Like I said, daydreaming and I'm thinking of you. Daydreaming and I'm thinking of you. So this is like this, but like at a certain time, maybe a song plays, makes them think of you with synchronicity. They could be seeing, you know, uh, they could be seeing 555. They could be seeing 444. Maybe they're seeing um, 666. Uh, maybe somebody's just seeing something that just constantly reminds them of you, constantly reminds them of how they feel because this is a purple card and then there's pink in the symbol. So I do feel like this is something that's bringing some sort of awareness to their emotional, um, their emotional feelings because 15 breaks down to six. So that's the lovers. So this is really about a union. And remember, we had soul sister playing. Somebody's coming to awareness. Their first die, that six deals with the first eye. So now it's like they're intuitively channeling, you know, the energy, you know, now they're tapping into their intuition. Now there's more of this cerebral activity. And now they're realizing like, dang, like, you know, there's absolute love here for my Scorpio. There's absolute a uh, 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 chemistry that that's unspoken or something that's undeniable and they can't deny it no more. With this six, I feel like, as I said, this is a connection that's being aligned by the divine himself. Like this is a spiritual union or some sort of past life love connection because both of you are coming into union. But it's going to happen in divine timing because your angels, your guides, your ancestors are overseeing this connection. So they're the ones working with the both of you separately, individually so that you could be prepared for this union because this 87 like i said that reduces to six the six gives me like lovers and on the lovers card you see that angel that's in between that masculine and feminine and they're both looking up so it's as if you're both are seeking wise counsel right before that the person that you're attracting is in the energy and the vibration of that 532 music so as i said they could be seeking wise counsel from the elders, from the matriarchs of the family, going to some sort of master teacher or, or some sort of healer, counselor, uh, seeking wise counsel in some way, building their wealth of knowledge. But with this six, this is like the divine is now taking action uh, to give you both the signs to let you know that the union is, in fact, a spiritual one, a kindred spiritual uh, connection or a cosmic connection. So with the synchronicity, this person absolutely feels like you match their fly, like you're the yang to their yin. Like there is something that's very familiar, something very 
beautiful and I do feel like this is someone that's from your past because that six is giving me like the six of cups so now it's like they're ready to come back to perhaps express or give you some news that you were not privy to like you know admitting their attraction or telling you how they feel speaking from the depths of their soul being honest or being transparent or being just emotionally um, vulnerable for you because this is something they've never done because it was a challenge for them in the past and now I feel like they're going to be more open and I feel like before they take this step or before they take initiative they're sending messages to you telepathically or intuitively or they're thinking of you heavily just so that there can be more of a soft reception when the two of you come into union you know maybe you find yourself flooded with memories of someone that you hadn't seen or heard and it could be because you're picking up on the fact that there's heavy thoughts of you this is somebody that's really really thinking of you a lot so i see six six here um this card also flew out uh for you know how they feel about you so they absolutely and we got six 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 so that's very interesting so and on the bottom of the deck we got 13 um which is effort so this person didn't make the effort remember i was saying somebody didn't reciprocate um, and when you, there's no reciprocity, that leads to you feeling very burdened. That leads to you feeling like you just want to take that time out. You just need to rest. And that's what the time out was 37 in the beginning, the 10. And so now this 13 is telling me there was a death of something because of someone's lack of effort. So this 13 is your energy. That's the death card. Something transformed within a relationship, which led to you saying, I'm, I'm pulling out of this. I'm taking a time out. I'm taking a step back. I'm getting out of this zone. Own, and you went to do some deep dives, some soul searching. And through the midst of you doing that internal work, I feel like somebody's also realizing um, your value. You know, this 13 reduces to four because now they're looking at you like, dang, you're holding back now, whereas they want to hold on to you. You're holding back because they weren't they didn't appreciate you in the beginning. And so now this person is kind of like trying to hold on to the connection because you're done. You know, once you get to that 13, that's like a death. That's like the ending. That's like you walking away because something has been revealed. Like there was like a tower moment. Um, there was something very shocking that could have come out and you've emerged someone completely different. And so, as I said, this person now wants to hold on to you because they're noticing your transformation. They're knowing the changes. They're noticing the changes that you've made and, you know, the shifts within your own consciousness, within your own energy, your vibration. Uh, maybe you're not giving them, a, a, you know, the same type of attention. Uh, maybe you're not communicating. Like I said, there's this ghosting. Um, but maybe some of the things they used to do in the past to try to hold on to the connection you're you're simply just you're not even responsive at this point or maybe there's just um no communication at all and they just feel you slowly but surely emotionally getting more distant and more you know more distant and it's it's kind of scaring them so with this 66 healing they absolutely feel like you've done a lot of healing after some sort of heartbreak because we have um the six uh, that six, six breaks down to 12, which is three. So you're healing from some sort of heartbreak. Like I said, a tower moment, sudden ending an emotional loss. Um, this is suffering from pain and trauma, betrayal, deception, lies, cheating, gossiping. Like this is somebody doing you dirty. And you know what? All you had to lean on was your strength. And like I said in the beginning, what you did was you focused on building yourself, rebuilding yourself. Um, this is an all blue card. Blue deals with the throat chakra. So the throat chakra doesn't even, I mean, it doesn't only um, deal with just communicating um, yourself, you know, expressing yourself communicatively, I should say, but it also deals with expressing yourself artistically, creatively, um, you know, authentically. And that's what you did. So you got lost in something creative or you got lost in taking a particular class or learning something, a particular field, um, getting your licensing, getting your um, degrees, you know, building some sort of wealth of knowledge. Maybe, like I said, going to a master teacher, learning, getting your certification or, you know, whatever it is. It's like this is a studious energy, turning the pain into power, becoming the alchemist, becoming, you know, that that 
master manifester. So with the six, six, it's like you've learned the, tr the tricks of the trade. You've learned, you know, we have Roy Ayers and this is called Everybody Loves the Sunshine. And so now, you know, this is like this illumination, as I said, it, it makes you more um, when you heal from certain pains and traumas, uh, you become enlightened. You know, you now can see things, you know, kind of like from that bird's eye view. So, you know, the betrayals and all of the things that may have kind of um, really, you know, caused you to suffer from emotional loss. It's like in the end, without those experiences, you would not have uh, the knowledge you have or the 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 deeper understanding of relationships or certain dynamics or you wouldn't have set those boundaries you wouldn't have discovered that talent that gift so it's like it's almost like the butterfly effect if you change one thing you could change everything and so it's almost like you you've learned to to own um, your power you've learned to accept it and you've also learned to to take onus and accountability um, and responsibility so that you can really be uh, you know really heal and really uh, be in emotional equilibrium. And so with that six, six, that, that heartbreak was really like that growing pain. You know, it was like you had to, to grow through something opposed to just going through it. You grew through the experience. And so with that synchronicity, many of you were seeing a lot of signs, um, number synchronicity, six, 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 six deals with protons, electrons, neutrons. So this is like your physical body. Um, you know, your being, this is you changing. Um, something within your structure, your molecular structure change, um, even if it's your consciousness, you, you've evolved. There was a peak, um, 666 reduces to 18. So that's nine. So that's the highest number of change. So you really, you know, with that 87 and 66, look, I'm going to show you one more again because I like to show so you can break it down. So that's 444. I just saw, uh, I said I saw 444. Four, four. I just saw five again. But um, it was 46. Um, oh four, but 87, that's six. And then the 66 healing. So that's six, six, six break down to 18, which is nine. So that's the highest number of change. That's how this person sees you. Like they see you as a master teacher, like you've reached a higher level, like self mastery. This is ascension growth. This is, you know, wisdom. You're like the high, uh, you know, pre emperor status, um, very stable, self-sufficient, independent. They see your worth value. Um, we have this Jill Scott feature in most F. This is called Love Rain. So yeah, there's there's something very, um, very emotional. This person gets emotional. You know, um, there's there's deep love. I feel like there's deep love. You know, it, it, there's this this undertone of love. You know, and with Love Rain, it's like this person feels um, this very strong, strong emotional attraction and a strong um feeling you know the strong feeling of emotion when they think of you when they think of this connection um and they love you ultimately and they want to change this they want to come forth and make the effort because they know the lack of effort the last the lack of reciprocity in the past um is what could have potentially sabotaged this connection um, and so they want to change that. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's, what's hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios. Thank you, spirit. They gave me a bunch of cards. Do I take these? All right. I'm hearing no, I'm not taking all those and give my cards a bang, bang boogie bottom of the deck. We got 55 again adventure. So somebody is definitely going to be, um, I feel like they're going to be more spontaneous, more willing to take risks, you know, more daring, going to take that leap of faith going Something's going to change, though. Something something beautiful is going to change because I feel like I'm hearing a new start. You know, five, five is one. So it's like something has come full circle. And time out. Look at this. Time out. Flew back out. Time out. Flew back out. And this is 37. So like I said, what's hidden is that there's, you know, the time out is up. So whatever time out, whatever protective bubbles you know, whoever was isolating themselves, now they're going to come back out to play. You know what I'm saying? Now it's like you're coming out of hibernation, coming out of that protective space. You're going to be more open, more receptive. You know, this is like surrendering to the divine, trusting your intuition, being available. You know, this is the new beginning. This is some fresh new start because someone has had, you know, that epiphany. Someone has had, you know, that 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 aha moment. 
and we have the 19 pride. See that? So 10, 10, 37 and 19. Somebody had to have an ego death. That's what was holding up this connection. This is what's hidden. So somebody had to take some time out to work on themselves because they were very egotistical, very proud, very stubborn. And they sabotaged this connection by not giving the attention, not giving the, you know, not being as attentive, not being as affectionate, not being as available, you know. And so this pride, this ego death had to happen. It had to occur. And, and with this time out, by you putting them on time out, because I felt like you put someone on time out because of their mistreatment of you. And because of their inability to see you for who you were or their inability to to um, love you right. It's like you put someone on time out and the divine is like, OK, you're both meeting, you know, um, in divine time. Because both of you have I feel like this is energy, dual energy, because, you know, like I said, whenever I see dual energy, I feel like that's you and your person. Well, both of these cards flew out together. So these both equal 10, 10. So this is another dual number. First, you had spirituality. Then you have healing. So your person has been healing. You've been healing. Both of y'all are reaching that peak where you're both you're both coming out of that hermit mode. You're both coming out of a situation enlightened. And we have Jodeci fiending. So somebody's really, really fiending for you. This is like I said, this 19 breaks down to one. So this is now somebody ready to take action because was I, I was saying like there's like this intensity. Something's building. You know, and what's building is someone's attraction, someone's sexual desire, attraction. They find you very beautiful. And it's because, you know, self-love makes you more attractive. Ultimately, we have read on the inside of the symbol for the pride card. So, like I said, that's an ego death. Somebody's was checkmated. You know, somebody was playing hard to get. And now they're fiending. Now they're desiring you more. We got manifestation. I can't make this up. This is eight. So some of you all are master manifestors. Like I said, that magician, that alchemist, co-creating with source, setting intention, utilizing the elements around you. Very aware of your power, very aware of your ability to call in what you desire. Maybe some of you all were using the solar eclipse, using that black moon energy. Maybe you're going to be using this upcoming lunar eclipse energy. The lunar eclipse is in Scorpio. So that's a very powerful energy to utilize to manifest wish fulfillment. Maybe there's a wish fulfillment that's coming in that you've been manifesting. This is in love. This is in finances. This is in career. This is in your, your personal endeavors, goals, business. It's like there's things like really looking up this positive energy. It's like infinite supply. What is the outcome for my beloved Scorpios? May I have a message of love and of light. Somebody's really fiending for you. Somebody's fiending for conversation, fiending to speak to you. I'm hearing like somebody really loves to just look at you. You know, somebody may be just looking at old photos. Can't stop looking at some photo. Look at this. I can't make this ish up. We got karmic completion. Cycles ending. Somebody's coming out of a toxic cycle. Now they're finding themselves like they're needing to ground themselves. And we have leadership on the bottom of the deck, 81.9. Somebody sees you now is, is very powerful, strong. You take action. You take lead. You're a go-getter. You're determined. You're very willful, very ambitious, successful, abundant, wise. Like you're very wise. You make wise decisions. Maybe you know how to manage money. Maybe you know how to run a household. Maybe you're very domestic, resourceful, very practical. So we're going to use the psychic tarot. I mean, um, the energy. Um, oh, yo, I cannot look at this. Look what just these two cards just fell out of my hand. This is the moon card and the sun card and the lunar eclipse is about to come up. I just spoke on that. The sun and the moon just fell out when I pulled this deck of cards out of the box. This is crazy. <laughs> Absolutely insane. And we have on the bottom of the deck 15 appreciation. Appreciate your gift, Scorpio. Appreciate where you are on your journey. Maybe someone didn't appreciate you and now they're learning to appreciate you in your absence they have no choice 
This moon and the sun coming out together tells me that both the, sol the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse are um, going to be very uh, significant in wish fulfillment. The 52 and the 1 is telling me there's some sort of blessing, some sort of miracle, some sort of wish fulfillment here. I also feel like something was brought to light, some truth. You have some clarity on some things. Maybe somebody is getting some sort of enlightenment. Something that was hidden is now exposed or something that you didn't know. You now know or maybe there was some confusion and you're no longer confused. Maybe somebody who was hiding their feelings is now realizing they need to come toward you or they're feeling some sort of um, they feel inspired to come toward you. Feeling stronger. Remember, I was saying somebody's trying to muster up the strength, courage and wisdom. Somebody that carries deep emotion. Somebody that's also very sensitive, psychically, intuitively. Someone that has a lot of heavy dream activity. Somebody that really dreams. Maybe they, they, you're in their dreams. They're in your dreams. And we have um, Faith Evans ain't nobody. So what she says is ain't nobody who can love me like you. Ain't nobody who can do the things you do. So this person now has this epiphany. These deep feelings and emotions they've been suppressing. They can no longer suppress these feelings. So what do we have on the split? We got yin yang in the sun. I cannot make this ish up. And look what it reduces to. Look at that. 22 and 1. What is this? A dual number. So you and your person, like I said in the beginning, are both very psychic. You're matching one another's energy. The 2 is the vibration of the high priestess. We have 5-5 five, five come out. That's the vibration of the high priest. And remember, we have 5-5. Five, five that came out in the reading because we have a uh, 77 spirituality and your person is carrying the vibration of five with music. And so on the split, we got 22 and the one, which is the sun and then the, in, the yin yang. So this is, remember we had soul sister in the beginning. Now we got faith Evans, ain't nobody. So somebody's keeping the faith because they don't realize ain't nobody like you. This is the great epiphany with the sun next to the yin yang. They're coming to the realization that you're their cosmic companion, their soul sister, their soul mate. This is a spiritual union, a soul tie, a kindred spirit. This is somebody that could potentially be like a past life love. And this is also someone with whom you have a strong psychic connection. The two, two, both of you are like high priest, high priestess energy. So both of you are very spiritual, very psychic, very in tune. You're kind of tapped into one another's frequency, to one another's radio wave, like you're on the same wavelength. This person now is very aware. There's no hiding this. Ain't nobody like, there's nobody. There's nobody like you. Ain't nobody. They done tried to, it's almost like they, they, they done, ain't no mountain low enough, ain't no river wide enough type thing. Like they've been on this journey and they done, whoever they done chose, whatever situation they were in, it's like nobody can hold a candle to you. They see you as, you know, purity. They see you in your, 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 your beauty, your true form. And with this synchronicity here for how they feel about you, the 87, it's like they feel this love for you. You know, that's 87 breaks down to 15, which is six. So they feel like this, this strong affinity, this strong connection, this love, like it's divine. When the uh, angels are in between you and another person, like that's a divine connection. That's what they feeling. And with ain't nobody playing by faith, this person now has this aha moment. Ain't nobody like you. The sun, the sun shines everything brighter. Remember, we had sunshine playing earlier. Then we had daylight. We had Roy Ayer singing, everybody loves the sunshine. You're like the sunlight to them. You bring warmth. You bring clarity. You bring happiness and joy. You make them feel stronger. They feel a strong connection to you as well with this yin yang energy. There's definitely, you know, a very strong spiritual connection. So let's see what we got coming and going out and going on for my beloved Scorpios. My spirit of love and light. So I got a couple of runaways. Bottom of the deck, you got Archangel Mikael. Archangel Mikael is overseeing this connection. This is a very powerful angel. On Tuesdays, you can call upon Archangel Mikael. There is a nine week prayer that you can have every Tuesday. You set the time and um, you say the, the there's you say three Hail Marys, three. Oh, man, I can't. Um, 
I can't think of it right now. I'll post it because I spoke on it. So maybe that's for somebody. Somebody needs to do an Archangel Mikael nine week prayer. You know, um, that nine week, it brings in wish fulfillment. You could literally ask Archangel Mikael. It brings in miracles. Things have happened. I had a couple of months ago, you know, I showed a picture, um, you know, that uh, during one of the prayers um, that I was doing to Archangel Mikael, one of the weeks that I was doing my dedication prayer to Archangel Mikael, and there was a heart uh, and an angel in the candle. You know, you could see that he was kind of blessing it. And then the later that week, um, my brother, who he was in a very terrible car accident, thrown out of the car and he walked away unscathed. So there are miracles that take place with that Archangel Mikael ritual. I feel like Archangel Mikael could be one of you or I said one of you. Some of you are, uh, you know, like a spiritual parent, a spiritual father. Um, I definitely feel like you have a strong connection with Archangel Mikael. Like you may call upon him to get you through um, some really difficult times. Right now we have the gap band. This is called yearning for your love. So you have a, a, a strong connection with somebody. This is somebody that like, I feel like you may have walked away from in the past, uh, because there was some level of toxicity. Maybe Archangel Mikael protected you from something that was toxic. Um, and you chose to walk away because you realized your self love was more, um, important. Self care was more important Therefore, you displayed self-discipline, like you knew what you needed to do and you owned it. And Archangel Mikael was very significant in you making those decisions. He also helped you to cut like, you know, generational curses, yokes, ties, like karmic cords. He was very influential in, in freeing you from a lot of this toxicity. Remember, we had karmic completion. So Archangel Mikael was there with you um, during this journey. And he really helped you kind of cut yourself free from negativity. So this is a very beautiful energy here. So we have on the bottom of the deck. Look, I mean, we have one of the cards that flew out because remember we had a bunch of cards fly out. So we got carnucopia here. I cannot make this up. So there's wish fulfillment. This is like recognition, rewards, like you're being rewarded. You and the person that you're attracting. This is 77 and 11. You're both being rewarded because you've come into alignment. You know, this 11 is literally like a portal. So not only is it saying that you're like very psychically uh, powerful, strong, um, but it's saying, hey, because you've reached self mastery, because you are very sensitive to energy, to information, affirmation, because you've done your due diligence to work on yourself, because you've reached that that place where you are. My right ear is ringing, ringing loud. It just started ringing very loud. So with the 77 and this 11, that reduces to 88, eight, which is 16, that's seven yet again. So the 11 is telling me this downloads, you know, some of you all may have a lot of uh, dream, you know, activity right now. Maybe it will be wise to keep a dream journal, but I feel the divine is blessing you, showering you with those wish fulfillments. The 77 is 88. Eight. Both of you see one another as wish fulfillment. Remember, we had Sade saying cherish the day. And I was picking up on the fact that like you and this person will cherish one another. Your union will be cherished with carnucopia. I feel like you're being recognized and rewarded by the divine for, you know, putting forth that effort. Like I said, you didn't go through anything. You grew through it. You grew through the experience. You grew spiritually strong, mentally strong, emotionally strong, spiritually strong. And you have gained a tighter, stronger relationship with your angels, ancestors, guides, deities. The next card that fell out, we have deceit. So somebody that you're attracting, they're dealing with a level of deceit. Maybe they're dealing with someone that is deceitful. Because remember, we have um, a karmic completion that flew out with the number 10. And this is the number seven. <clears throat> so the person you're dealing with, with this 32, music. And then we have deceit. So somebody is realizing that there's some level of deception around them, either in their own mind or maybe the people they're dealing with. This also reduces to seven. So this is like, you know, the devil is the the the, the mind is the devil's playground. So if somebody is kind of overthinking things, overanalyzing things, you know, maybe this is, you know, something that they need to step away from, unplug, disconnect, because there could be some mental conflict. Maybe someone is. um dealing with some deceptive energy and maybe the music that they're listening to is kind of keeping them level headed, you know, showing them certain certain behaviors or certain um, energy around them. That's very, very uh, 
janky, you know, very snakish, you know, very, very fugazi, you know, but with this deceit, I just feel like that also could be like, um, self-sabotage. Cause remember we had pride. So somebody's really like egotistical, proud up in their head, thinking they the ishnit, you know, and, and, you know, that's a level of deception because the seven is giving me like the seven of swords, even though this is like a devil energy to me, I feel like that's like the devil. This is somebody very manipulative, very calculating. Maybe this is somebody they're dealing with and they come into this epiphany, you know, cause that 32 five, this is like after speaking to their elders, after getting that game, soaking up that game, that knowledge, that wise dome, it's like now they start seeing the forest from the trees. They can start seeing who the snakes are slithering in the grass. Or maybe they could see the error in their own perspective, their own um, ways of thinking. Because that 32 is like, you know, also the five of cups, you know, maybe after, you know, taking those risks, after taking certain people up on offers, maybe a listening to all of the chatter around them, people misguiding them, misinforming them, and them not listening to their own intuition. Now they're starting to see the people for who they truly are. Because they stepped away, they took that time out as we see what's hidden in the energy and they started to assess their behavior. So now they're seeking that wise counsel. The 32 reduces the five, which is the, like I said, the high priestess. I mean the high priest or the hierophant, pardon me. And so now that's the energy of reflection. You know, that's the energy of, of, of seeking wise counsel, uh, seeking counsel, higher learning you know, studentship, and you're learning something. This person is learning something. They could be obsessed, obsessively watching you, obsessively thinking of you, because that seven is also the crown chakra. So there could be a lot of obsessive thinking of you. Like I said, maybe they're playing certain songs over and over because it reminds them of you, or there's a certain song that's like, you know, they make them, it makes them think of you, makes them think of this connection. You know, they just kind of like got it on repeat, rewind. You know, I heard rewind. So it was like they could be rewinding or repeating a song. It's just on repeat, just playing it over and over and over, obsessively thinking of you. And we got Evelyn Champagne King. It's because they love you. And with King, I feel like this could be a masculine energy or a feminine. Doesn't matter. We have Healer of the Ages. This is how they feel about you. Number 51. This is another six. So the six is showing like, you know, all the deep dive and the healing you've had to do. You've had to work on yourself and through working on yourself, you've learned to love yourself. And this is what's caused them to really, you know, start reflecting back. This is somebody from the past. I definitely see this person sees you as someone that's like, because you've had to heal yourself, you are a healer. You know, maybe there's something about you that makes them feel, you know, very attractive, you know, very mesmerized very intrigued you know there's this mysticism about you but there's also this synchronicity we got six six so you got six six here and remember we had six six right next to it which is healing so 87 is 15 that's six and then we have 51 that's six and then we got the six 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 that also flew out so we definitely see you know this this same energy it's just a constant like synergy you and this person's energy are constantly like boom boom so i feel like this person is also seeing you as somebody that's like a healer shaman a light worker like you're very nurturing this person's in love with you you know maybe this person realizes they they broke your heart they hurt you in the past and they want to heal this connection because it says healer of the aged so this would be something that you know they really want to work towards they want to really tell you how they feel And what she says is, when I think about you, I'm in love, you know, so this person realizes they're in love and six is the number of the lovers. And the lovers is really like union. It's about, you know, a, a, a very profound connection and dynamic and, 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 and um, soul tie you have with someone else. This can lead to marriage. This can lead to, like I said, commitment. I remember we had Cherish pay, playing by Sade. So somebody really cherishes you, cherishes this connection. And this is what they really want to do. They want to come in and heal it. You know, they want to bring balance. You know, he has his hands kind of like extended on both sides. So it's like the, he wants to balance it. And because he's sitting like underneath this like archway, it's like you, you're an initiate, you know. So because you've healed yourself, it's like you've you've healed this connection. You know, this is how they see you. The work you've done on yourself, you've healed your twin, you've healed your cosmic companion, your kindred spirit, your soulmate, 
you know, you've healed that person as well because you had to heal yourself. So it's like you, you sent out those healing rays. That's why healing is right next to it. And this person is also matching your vibration and your frequency, your energy. So what we have clarifying that is six, uh, six chakra Archangel Metatron. See that? So that's the number four. So this definitely is telling me like there's a lot of intuition, like psychic abilities, um, you know, because the Archangel Metatron deals with the first eye. So there's a lot of intuition, a lot of downloads, a lot of outformation, you know, information. This is also like the angels are overseeing this union, just as I said, because this is like the lovers, you know, to me. Both of you all are in like that lovers vibration because this is a dual number, you know, and this is also giving me that four, like the four of wands, the lovers, um, the twin flame number that 1111 is four. So this this connection, this union is going to bring stability, you know, and I feel like this person is definitely looking at. Um, you in a way where, you know, they feel like you, you really heal them. You bring love, you know, you bring the sense of balance. You bring the sense. Give me one moment. My cat is crying to get out of the door. All right. My bad. So, yeah. So this person is definitely, you know, as I said, communicating with you telepathically and intuitively, sending you some messages, maybe visiting you in your dreams. But there's really, you know, a desire to heal you know, to heal this connection here. We got Prince singing, I want to be your lover. So this person definitely wants to be your lover. And, you know, they're tired of being on time out. This is somebody that definitely has been on time out. You have not been communicating with them. There's been this ghosting, you know, and they want to be your lover. That's the epiphany they've had. We have the daughter personal healing and happiness here. And this is what seven. <laughs> so, yep, constant thoughts thinking of you. This is what they're walking away from. From this this time out, this this moment, you know, taking those deep dives, internal self audits, you know, soul searching. It's like now there's this door to personal healing and happiness because they've reached that that higher level of of understanding. They have an evolved perspective of you, of this union, of what they could have. I see Mama Oya here bringing forth, you know, bringing forth change. And it's because you've all had to be like the co-creators. You know, that's what that energy of studious energy is. It's like you're, you're taking your pain and literally turning it into power, transmuting the pain, turning it into power, being the conduit of change, you know, making sure to implement the changes as necessary, not backing down from it, even though it was difficult to do. And someone's very attracted to you, attracted to um, the connection that the two of you share, the bond you share. They want to be a lover. This is somebody that has this new profound insight. This is the news that's going to come in and it's going to lead to the door to personal healing and happiness for the both of you because we have the number 734. So this is something I feel you already know, you know, but I also feel like this person is charging towards you to bring forth, you know, this, 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 um, you know, charging forward to bring forth this change. You know, this is like I said, that seven is the vibration of like the chariot. So now there's this assertiveness, there's this confidence. Someone has really been mustering up their 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 strength to come towards you because they've had some sort of epiphany with the 37. They're, they're tired of being on timeout. They're tired of non-communication. They're tired of separation. They're tired of all of that because they know that one they want to be your lover. I'm hearing like they want to come in like. You know, your knight in shining armor, your prince. Prince is, you know, the artist. And so it's like they want to come in um, and court you. I'm feeling like, you know, a prince courts, you know, that princess. You know, so it's like they want to treat you like royalty. I'm getting a sense of treating you like royalty because this is leading to some sort of harmony, some domestic harmony, some some happiness. And it's from it's because you've healed. You have to first heal yourself in order to really embrace and enjoy this, this, this happiness that's coming towards you or else you would just be like bitter and ungrateful and entitled. But it's like you're none of that because you've taken the time out to heal. You've taken that time out. This 37 is showing the time out that you took to heal thyself. And when you heal thyself, you learn to love thyself. When you love thyself, you learned 
you learn who you are. You know thyself. And so that's why somebody's taking initiative. They come in towards you because there's this intensification, emotions, passion, desire. And so this is what they're coming after. You know, they want to walk through that door to personal healing and happiness. And they want to build that that family, that unit with you. So somebody that could see you, like I said, is the, you know, the yang to their yin. We saw that yin yang energy. So that's like, you know, domestic partners. So we have the temple path is here. So, yeah, somebody definitely had to go through some sort of process. This is the 12. So 12 breaks down to three. So this is really showing me that there was really uh, somebody from your past, you know, somebody that had to really go within. This three could tell me, you know, that this is somebody from the past that wants to return. You know, maybe they want to apologize. Maybe they want to build a, un a connection, reconnect, like I said. This is somebody that took some time to think to assess, you know, maybe they've been waiting to take action for a while and they wanted to wait till they saw certain signs or till certain other things developed. Um, cause I'm getting like the three of wands energy. Um, but with this pride, they, they, maybe they were just kind of like looking at themselves, you know, kind of like observing them themselves and seeing, because this, this temple path, you know, this is like, you know, this is usually where, uh, beautiful ceremonies take place. You know, and maybe someone gained some sort of a, some enlightenment, you know, gained some sort of awareness. Um, and I'm hearing and clarity about how stubborn and ego they may have been in the past. And we have a Marie. This is called talking to me. So maybe this is somebody that, like I said, because you stopped talking to them, this has brewed someone ego. Maybe they were so used to being able to pop up, disappear, pop up. This is like somebody that, that gave you mixed signals that was like unreliable, irresponsible, flighty type of energy. You know, and maybe they've been kind of waiting for you to reach out or waiting for you to talk to them first. And maybe they don't talk to you first because of their pride and ego. But at this 19, I feel like somebody's really just getting tired of the weight. You know, I feel like you took the time out to heal yourself, whereas somebody else had to take the time out to, you know, kind of like do some some soul searching, some some reflection. You know, I mean, which is ultimately what healing requires. But I feel like somebody that was very egotistical has been, um, you know, the divine has kind of been working with this person, giving them like divine guidance, you know, divine intervention, you know, really enlightening them. And they've had a wake up call, you know, with this temple path. It's like, you know, the temple is, you know, your Christ consciousness, like I said, your mind, you know. And so they've had to do some reflection, a lot of reflecting. I'm getting like the three of wands, as I said, waiting for something to change. But you have to enact the change, you know. This is somebody like ready to take action, planning, preparing, strategizing. But they knew, you know, the first step was the ego death, 19 ego death. That's, you know, something coming to a complete crash, burn, done, kaput. That doesn't work. Let me get rid of that. Like, that's at least good, you know. And then I'm thinking of like the three of swords. The three of swords is also, you know, because 12 reduces to three. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, apply it to wherever it belongs. And the three of swords is showing me that, you know, that's where they've had to grow. You know, their ego could have put them in a position where they got broken hearted or their ego led them to breaking hearts. And so now there could be some reflecting back on those um, hearts that have been broken or the people they may have betrayed, deceived, because this energy of deceit is here on the person that you're attracting. Remember, we had 32 music and then we had the deceit card. For the person you're attracting, this is what clarified it. So this could be speaking to the ego, death, you know, somebody being very manipulative or very calculating or very controlling or someone suffering from some sort of addictions or afflictions. You know, whether this is behaviors, ideologies, habits, this could be succubus, incubus energy. This could be someone that had leeches and parasites around them, confusing them. This is other people in the mix listening to the wrong people. You know, this is attachments of some sort energetic attachments, you know, whatever. But somebody had to go down some sort of spiritual path. If it had to take some sort of spiritual journey in order to see, you know, how maybe their ego maybe have uh, has sabotaged a lot more in their lives than they initially realized. So now we have contract. 
So this is like Mama Justice, Mama Ma'at. She has everyone's address. So this contract, there's a contract that's up. So somebody who could have potentially been married, engaged, going through common law marriage. It's like that cycle's completed. There was a lot that needed to be learned, a lot of growing that has transpired. But now the contract is up. I feel like if you're going through some sort of legal proceedings or if you're preparing to sign contracts, remember during Mercury retrograde, don't do it. You don't want to do any signing of contracts during this time. I definitely feel like I'm hearing divorce proceedings or divorce decrees. Somebody could be going to court for alimony. Somebody could be asking somebody for alimony or child support. I feel like with this karmic completion, this is definitely saying that the cycle um, is complete with you and another person. And now you're on this new journey. This is like the voyage, the new voyage, this too. So you, you've followed your intuition and instruction. I feel like the angels and the guides is leading someone towards you. They're taking, um, they're making, they, I just feel like somebody's taking initiative to come towards you. This is like, you know, communication coming in as well. Justice. Things are going to be balanced out for you. And Archangel Mikael is here overseeing this. And then you have second chakra, Ariel. And then, oh, wow. Then you have third chakra, um, Shamuel. And then happy family underneath that. So I feel like there is a very powerful connection that you're forging with someone. And we have uh, Jill Scott, my love. Playing. So, yeah, this is somebody that's going to be, you know, you're like your love. You know, this is somebody that's going to love you. This is somebody that's going to really treat you good. This is somebody who's going to be like very affectionate and attentive for you. This is beautiful. I feel like this is somebody you're going to call my love. Like, yes, my love. You know, like this is just somebody that you have a very beautiful connection. The bottom of the deck, we're going to be using the tarot cards. We got the sun card here, baby. The sun. And so illumination, the sun showed up twice, I believe, in this reading. Didn't we see the sun? Oh, yes, we did with the um, with the um, energy. Remember that those two cards fell out, the moon and the sun. And it's very interesting because we have the lunar eclipse coming up. We just had the solar eclipse. So the solar eclipse is when the sun covers the moon and the lunar is when the moon covers the sun. So. Listen to your intuition. Maybe there's something coming to light. Like I said, with my love, maybe somebody that's going to become your love is coming in. Or maybe somebody's going to pen a letter and it's going to read my love. I wanted to da 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 da. Maybe somebody that you dealt with called you love. Like that was maybe their, their little, you know, pet name for you. You know, a little nickname. They used to call you my love. Yes, my love. You know, but I do feel like with this sun card, I feel like there's happiness. Remember, we did see happy ending in the beginning, you know, and that happy ending is telling me that something beautiful is coming in. That happy ending was the number 93. So this could be from that past person, you know, that person that had the ego death, that person that had, you know, that that uh, grand epiphany. You know, that person that has, you know, had some sort of moment to reflect and deep dive and sit at the feet of the elders, you know, or go through some sort of learning process. You know, somebody who has like evolved, got some game, some some knowledge, some some wise dome from the, el you know, from the elders or the matriarchs and the family. Now they're coming to you right and exact. You know, this is the sun card. They're coming in strong. They're coming in, you know, very passionate. You know, very intense. There's this intensity. It's been building. So on the split, we have judge. Oh, the world. Look at that. There could be distance between you and this person because the world is here. So this is also speaking to the fact that, you know, somebody sees how much you've transformed. Like you've gone through enormous change. And this is why this person is kind of like bitten by the smitten bug, because it's like they've watched you like you've transformed so much that it's like. You're like just a ray of sunlight, like they're, they're all they're in awe, they're starstruck, you know, and that's why they see you as, you know, the synchronicity and the healer of the ages, because you've literally healed yourself. Every great healer has to first heal themselves. And with healer of the ages, it's like maybe that's something that you do. You know, maybe you've healed them. Maybe this is something they're coming to realize through watching you. They may have learned a lot. You know, maybe this is somebody that watches you in private and you don't even know. 
You know, this is somebody that often thinks of you, somebody that often, um, see, I just saw the seven of swords. So this definite, this person spies, see that this person does spy on you. They watch you from afar. I was picking up on that energy. And then as soon as I shuffled, I saw it. So that seven of swords energy, that's somebody that's kind of like that secret admirer, but that's also remember the seven of, um, I was getting the seven of swords from this deceit card, which is what clarified that 32 music for the person you're attracting. So this could be somebody who's potentially deceiving themselves, you know, somebody who see that I just saw the ace of uh, the ten of wands. So this is that person you put on time out. This is that person that overburdened you with their drama, somebody that didn't come after what they wanted, somebody that didn't take initiative, somebody that didn't reciprocate. It's like you gave people chance after chance and they just they never um, satisfied you or fulfilled you in any way. And you just felt like these connections were overburdensome. It's like you was constantly giving or you was constantly the one that everybody went to for help or everybody went to for advice. And it was like they was just laying all of their burdens on you. But the moment that one little moment that you may have needed that same reciprocity, it was like nobody was there. So it was like you was carrying everybody else's burdens and yours on top of it until you just said, I, I, I need a timeout. I need a pause, beloved. I need a reset. And so now somebody watches from a distance with the seven of swords here. Somebody that's ready to talk. They're ready to communicate. There's two blue birds. And I just saw a blue bird outside of my window the other day. So there's two blue birds on the sword. The sword is he's about to like lift it up, you know, very straight. So it's like, you know, he's he's kind of like trying to kind of get the right time. Check the temperature to see when the right time to come in. You know, the blue deals with the throat chakra. The birds represent looking at things from a bird's eye view or some sort of communication, you know. So they're waiting for the right time to communicate or to initiate some sort of act or action with the five of swords. I was picking up on that five. This 32 music five is their energy. So the three, two, this could have been somebody who, you know, could have tried to, you know, it was maybe they were combative. Maybe there was, like I said, a lot of competition. Maybe they was trying to win at all costs. This led to deep betrayal, hurt, pain, agonizing pain. Like the Ten of Swords to the back, the tower. This was like due, due to someone's deception, due to someone's manipulation, due to someone's, you know, negativity. And they sabotaged the whole thing. Perhaps they took action without calculating the risks. Maybe they was, like I said, listening to the wrong people. Yeah, there was definitely other parties. I just saw the Six of Pentacles. So there was other people in the mix. You know, there was definitely other people that they were giving their time and attention to, which is why you got like the, you know, you got the bare end of the stick. It was just like, you know, it, it, you got nothing. You got nothing. That's why you walked away because you was feeling emotionally bankrupt any old way. And that's why the healing was required, you know. So now we have, look at this, the Queen of Cups. I can't make this up. You came out of the gate in your energy. Queen of Cups, first card, whether you're male or feminine, or masculine or feminine. And we have Jersey Monet, Monet and this is called Tonight is the Night. Some of y'all may be from Jersey. New Jeru's is what we used to call it back in the days. You know, but tonight is the night. So maybe with Tonight is the Night, you know, maybe somebody is going to re reach out and call you. You know, maybe somebody, you know, when you do set up a time or an opportunity or a chance to sit down and have a conversation with someone, um, it may happen in the nighttime. Maybe somebody will call you and be like, look, tonight is the night or maybe tonight is the night is just saying like tonight. Somebody may reach out to some of y'all, you know, but something's going to happen in the nighttime. It says love and war is the name of this album. So I do feel like this is like, you know, one of those love hate connections. And you know that most twin flame or, you know, past life connections, it always feels like there's this 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 resistance between you and that person. And it's mostly because you're both not quite, you know, on the same time frame, you know, or on the same uh, in the same level of awareness you know about the relationship but I feel like there is going to be an opportunity for things to become aligned because both of you like I said in the beginning you had to both separately work on yourselves in order to come back into union and be aligned at the right time divine timing is always of essence but we have here spirituality carnal copia and we have that queen of cups here 
So this is absolutely a love dynamic, a love connection. And I feel because you took the time out to heal yourself, especially in that Queen of Cups energy, even if you're king, like I said, that's a very emotionally intelligent energy. Um, your emotions, your intuition, as I said, very heightened, very sensitive with this 11 here. This is showing the divine downloads, information, affirmation, divine interventions coming from spirit. This is that energy of you receiving messages even from your cosmic companion. And I do feel like there's love. There's this, you know, this very um, fulfilling energy. And I feel the divine is rewarding you for reaching that level of uh, self-mastery, for becoming that great healer, for transmuting that pain. I feel this connection is also going to be one filled with loyalty because loyalty is a part of your love language, you know, um, as well as like emotional intelligence, having a partner that's emotionally intelligent and on the same wavelength and vibration. So on the bottom of the deck, look what we have here. We got the 10 of Pentacles. I can't make this ish up. So emotionally, financially stable, you know, feeling fulfilled. Maybe somebody was in a marriage, you know, maybe somebody was dealing with someone for material reasons for stability, for security. Maybe someone was residing in a home with someone sharing the bills, the mortgage, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the responsibilities, feeling obligated. Um, but there was a level of deception because maybe this is not what someone wants. Maybe someone was being manipulated because we have this deceit card here and he's literally manipulating something in his hands. This could be someone that does, that was, um, up in their head about this uh, relationship. I also feel somebody is really focused on their finances, focused on um, their their future, their legacy, uh, family. This is, you know, really somebody that was really invested, I feel. Somebody put their all in, but this could also be speaking to something being, uh, being done, you know, something ending. Because remember, we had contract and karmic completion. So somebody could be wrapping up a cycle because tens literally, you know, mean endings, you know, but it also denotes a new beginning. But I feel somebody's ending a very toxic uh, relationship, family dynamic, because this could be, you know, very indicative, the Ten of Pentacles of like family, wife, children, husband, fiance, you know, like I said, uh, uh, common law marriage. Uh, this could be something that has been very deceitful or very, just living a lie, you know, and now the jig is up. It's over. Somebody's changing. Someone's perspective has changed. What they desire has changed. They've learned their love, love lesson. They've listened to and spoke to the elders. They sought counsel um, and now they're enlightened. And now there's this communication. So we have right now um, span do ballot and this is called true. So now somebody wants to be truthful, honest um, with this deceit card. That's like Judas. That's like, you know, a snake. That's somebody not being honest. But with true, it's like somebody now is going to speak their truth or there's someone that sees the truth, um, perhaps in this family dynamic, or maybe somebody wants to, you know, be with someone that is their true counterpart. They don't want to be in a relationship based off lies or based off of, um, you know, social, uh, you know, socioeconomical or, or, or social um, reasons and purposes. Uh, they want to be true to themselves. They want to be their authentic selves. They want to be in a relationship or a connection where there is, you know, the chemistry, the love, the magnetism, um, you know, just the attraction overall. So let's see. They don't want to feel controlled either, you know, because I feel like somebody was being controlled. See that the four of wands. So this person was absolutely like, this is a connection where somebody lived with another person. They was residing with someone and there was lies, there was deceit. And this is somebody in a connection due to, you know, perhaps the stability or maybe the way it looked. Somebody now sees like, you know, maybe this wasn't a true connection that they were in. You know, this is not that same twin flame connection. We got true here. So they were deceiving themselves that they were in some sort of true marriage or true partnership because we have span do ballot and it's called true uh, Earl. No, started again. yeah so this is like see that so it's telling me listen to this song so true so they realized somebody wasn't true in this connection or they realized they were not in true love with somebody because this is how you know what's in your person what you know what your person is feeling so they don't feel like they're being their authentic self. 
They feel like they're missing something. There's something absent. Bottom of the deck, we got the hangman. Hanging man. So like I said, looking at things from a different perspective, you know, being forced. This is a sacrificial position that the divine places you in so that you can, you know, gain an evolved perspective, like I said. So you can see something from someone else's vantage point opposed to just constantly like me, 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 I, I, I. That's why this pride, you know, is here. You know, somebody's having an ego death, you know, very proud and stubborn. When you're proud and stubborn, the divine is going to force you into you know, that hanging man status. So you can see like, you know, sun don't fucking shine. Pardon me. <laughs> sun don't rise and set on your ass. Like there's other people, other parties, other moving pieces that are very, you know, important to this situation as well. It ain't all about you. And so somebody is seeing themselves, you know, in, in their true light, you know, something that's, that was hidden is coming to light. That's what, you know, the, the solar eclipse could have brought forth some sort of truth, you know, and this is something somebody was hiding. So let's see how this person feels about you. I feel like they're looking at you for who you truly are now. They didn't see your worth and value before. They didn't see the magnitude or feel the magnitude of this connection. But now they feel it. You know, now their true feelings, like I said, is starting to come to um, light, you know. So why is um, synchronicity and healer of the ages here for how this person Scorpio is attracting feels? And I just bent the mess out of this card and look what we got, the magician. This person definitely sees that you are a magician and you make things happen. That's what I heard. You make things happen. You got the power. You're aware. You're fully aware. You're in tune. As above, so below, as within, so without. You're receiving them downloads. You're receiving, you're like very, very sensitive. They see you as very powerful. You set intention. You speak powerful words. You lay healing hands. You perform spiritual baths. You just got that. Nap. You have wisdom. They see you as very wise. And it's like you're aware of this power. It's like you know you got the power. It's like you're owning that power. You're utilizing that power. And we have um, 112. Love you like I did. So this person is really like they know you know. How they truly feel like nobody out there is going to love them the way you did. They know that, you know, because you're they see you as look at this. You got the healer of the ages, number six. And then we got the magician, you know, and both of these energies are very um, profound in terms of like, you know, showing spiritual strength. You know, and with synchronicity, it's like. The lovers, that 15 breaks down to six, the lovers, they know no one else is going to love them like you did. Because with you, like I said, that's the yin yang, this t cosmic companion, soul, sister, soulmate, kindred spirit energy that you two share. It's like that both of these, these energies, look at the crown chakra. That, that's, that's like downloads, divine interventions. This is sensitivity. This is how they see you. Like you just, you're, you just know you're a seer underneath that. We got the nine of pentacles here. So not only do they see you as someone who has healed thyself, but they also see that you have been working very hard, very diligently eyes on the prize. As I said, in a studious energy, one track minded, building your wealth, rebuilding your brand, saving up your pennies, your coins, going to school, getting certifications, licensing. Like now you're very self-sufficient, independent. Now they see your worth. And it says, ain't nobody going to love you like I did. This is what they're now realizing, the epiphany. With the 66 healing, they're healing from heartbreak, disappointment, betrayal, deception, lies, cheating, someone using them for money. And now there's this, you know, they're now looking at things from a different perspective. Now they're seeing that they were used, they were gaffled, they were played. They was treated like options. Perhaps there was some cheating going on. Maybe there was a third party involved. Meanwhile, they're also gaining inspiration by watching you heal, transform, shift, grow, evolve, build your wealth, build your knowledge, and also exude this, this energy of royalty, divinity, creativity, self-love, self-respect, very in tune, very down to earth. Metatron's first eye is open. This is how they feel that you, you know, they feel you. They feel your presence and I feel you feel their presence. The both of you have communication like you both communicate telepathically. This first eye, sixth chakra, 
And then we got the six, six here healing. So both of you through healing yourselves and building your spiritual strength, you've been able to obtain some sort of, you know, psychic abilities or some sensitivity. And that's why the both of you are communicating. This is the sixth chakra here. And both of you are in that sixth chakra energy. So very, very in tune. That's also the lovers. And they know ain't nobody going to love them like you did. With this nine of pentacles, pre-emperor status, they see your worth, your value. Like I said, you're very domestic. We got the high priestess here. Can't make this up. So the high priestess is showing just the psychic powers that you possess. That inner know knowing, that inner knowledge, that inner gumption is what you trust. I feel like you've trusted, you know, what your, your higher self, you know, where it led you. You know, the nudges. You're also the keeper of ancient wisdom. You're also very sensitive. This is something that you've ascended to. You've ascended to this gift through healing yourself. You've ascended to this space of knowing. To this place of, of just very, very sensitive. And we have Marvin Gaye, Trouble Man. And we got the Ten of um, Pentacles here on the bottom of the deck again. And remember, we have time out and door to personal healing and happiness. So this troubled man, this man that's dealing with this, you know, toxicity, this deception, whoever, or even if it's a feminine energy that's dealing with this toxic energy, you know, because we ha remember we have deception here, clarifying the 32 music. And then we have that four of wands. Well, whoever the troubled man or the troubled female is, it's like now they're, they're going to take the time out necessary. They're unburdening themselves. That's like the Ten of Wands energy, just kind of releasing, letting all of the ish go. It's like inhale, you know, the peace and love and exhale all of the bull crap. And that's what somebody is going through right now. They're literally like on time out, putting things on pause and they're going to embrace, you know, coming into a new cycle. Pardon my, my son's phone is ringing and I'm in the middle of reading and the phone is on the other side of the room, you know, but, um, there's definitely an opportunity for new, oppor for new, um, for new financial circumstances. Cause it says door to personal healing and happiness. So with this 10 of pentacles, I definitely feel like financially you're going to be fulfilled because we just saw the nine of pentacles. So you've really worked very hard to achieve some sort of goal, to obtain some sort of success. Uh, you've really worked hard. You've done your due diligence. I do feel like somebody's going to come in and offer that ace of pentacles. They're going to offer something tangible. I was picking up like marriage, commitment, having some sort of ceremony. Other people are going to cherish, you know, the ceremony or cherish the relationship, the connection that you have. And this is just leading to that door to personal healing and happiness, the domestic harmony, you know, building that that nucleus, that family with someone. Um, the Ten of Pentacles is very, um, it symbolizes that. So I feel like there's some sort of fulfillment, emotional, financial, um, spiritual fulfillment, happiness, joy, peace that you're coming into. And it's because now, you know, that moment for you to get reacclimated, um, you know, to re-enter a situation, you know, or to, to start over, you know, um, new beginning, have a new chance at something. It's like you're, you're going to be very fulfilled here. So why is this time out door to personal healing and happiness here for what is hidden in the energy for my beloved Scorpios? And we have a card that just fell down. And look, at I cannot make this up. Didn't I say that this 37 was like that new beginning? Because you, you've been on time out, pause. This is like, you know, being in a protective bubble, you know, hibernation even, you know. And now there's this passionate, fiery new start because that 37 reduces to one. So that's like a passionate new start. Something's intensifying. Someone's feeling, someone's passion, someone's desire. I'm hearing hand fasting. So this is absolutely leading to a marriage. This is leading to you being very fulfilled emotionally. You're being, you're like, it's like all of your needs, wants, and desires are coming in to fruition. It's like your wish fulfillment, your prayers are being answered. It's like you and this person are going to have a very beautiful, powerful, passionate, loving, very intense uh, connection. And I feel with trouble, man, you know, maybe there's, there were some troubles, um, you know, leading up to this divine union, you know, but someone has done their work, you know, with trouble, man, we're about to clarify pride. So that's what this person's you know, issue. Maybe that was something this person had to see for themselves. 
you know, that was what caused a lot of the problems or a lot of the, the negativity in their connections or the dis, you know, the disconnect or the miscommunication, or it's just like, you know, that led to trouble for this person. And so there was a lot of soul searching, a lot of healing, a lot of reflecting, you know, for them to, to get out of that, that very egotistical, egoic place, the male ego, or just that, that conceitedness, you know, that, that, uh, arrogant place. And so we have a Mel LaRoe, this is called Brave Bird. So someone is ready and prepared to brave, you know, this storm. They're ready to brave this, this um, action, whatever it is. Because this 12, the temple path is like, I was saying it was giving me like three of wands. The three of wands is really like, you know, planning, preparing, strategizing. And then, you know, it's like that ready, set, go. So you plan, then you, you know, you prepare, then you, you know, you set action. And so it's like after the death of someone's ego or after some sort of illumination or clarity, it's like now they could take action towards something, maybe going back to someone or uh, going towards someone from their past or taking some sort of effort to or making some sort of effort to rebuild a connection or to reconnect or to reconcile or even to collaborate, build an alliance, work together. Maybe you met someone at your place of employment. Maybe someone, it was hard for someone to see beyond um, you in a particular light. Maybe if you worked with someone, maybe it was difficult for them to see you other than just their coworker or their peer. Maybe they listen to other people say, oh, that will never work. Or maybe there's something where they received a lot of outside, unsolicited advice or just receiving a lot of backlash or maybe a decision to go towards you now they're braving their light maybe they're they have to show some sort of bravery or they have to take initiative be assertive be courageous i was hearing cor courage strength courage and wisdom so yeah they're mustering up the strength courage and wisdom to take action after you know some moment of like you know an ego death you know and we have the three of i didn't even see the three of pentacles in my hand hello Look at that. The three of pentacles coming back, wanting to work together. Somebody you could have worked together with. Someone you could have worked with. See that? And the 19 is telling me like this is like, you know, something's coming full circle. And with brave bird, you know, that bird reference tells me like someone's looking at things from a bird's eye view, being logical, being strategic, calculating, like trying to approach something the right way. My throat chakra is trying to get choked up. So somebody's really, you know, afraid to speak their truth and they're trying to muster up the courage. They're trying to be brave because they see you in your light. They see you as powerful. They see you as the magician, the healer of the ages. Like you've had a major transformation, you've grown, you're evolved, you know, they see you as somebody very in tune, like very in, in, um, in harmony. Cause that 87 reduces to six. So that's like balance yin yang. So you're very logical, very emotionally intelligent. Like you're just, you're, you're, you're balanced, you're harmonized and they want to work together, but they're trying to muster up how to do so. They're trying to brave this light. So we have the ego death clarified. By the six of wands. So they're going to take action. Oh, they coming after you, baby. You, they see you as the empress. What did I say about bravery? So look at that. That's the victory. When you take action, you know, when you, when you go towards your fears, you know, when you don't run away from your fears and you confront them, this is what could happen. This is like breakthroughs, victories, success. This is also like a, a ceremony of some sort of wedding ceremony. He's going straight towards that empress because this is the attraction. This is the level of magnetism. It's like you have this this beauty, you know, and I feel like they was trying to be all cocky, you know, trying to play too cool for school. And they had to sit down and learn, you know, they had to learn. They had to grow. You know, they had to be without you for a while to to realize, you know, the, the magnitude of this connection. This six of wands and the empress together is telling me that there is going to be some sort of victory or breakthrough from someone from your past that's returning. That has a lot of passion, a lot of love. This is someone that is really going to be very um, intentional, very attentive, very affectionate because they have this passion. I feel like remember I was saying that somebody that. They're going to cherish you. 
And I feel like the way that this person or the way that you all have like some sort of ceremony or some sort of commitment ceremony, a marriage, it's like other people are going to cherish this connection. It's like this is like something that's going to be cherished. Like your love story is going to be cherished. Maybe other people are going to be there to witness this commitment, this marriage ceremony. But this is like a marriage ceremony. The Empress is your energy. You're in this very divine feminine energy or divine masculine energy. They see you as someone who has transformed beyond recognition. You know, they see you as, as very abundant, very nurturing, very empowered, very enlightened. It's like you've gone through some sort of powerful awakening and this has sparked them to do their work. It's like that's why there's so much reflection. You know, that's why there's not too much action. They're just reflecting first. They're, they're trying to strategize, trying to, you know, map out the right course of action, the right plan. And they know the first thing they have to do is get rid of that ego because the empress knows her worth and value. She's not going to settle. And so this person is aware that they're not you're not going to settle for the, the shenanigans, the games, the child's play, the immaturity. You, you, you know, your worth and value. You're the empress. So with this, you know, the four of cups, see that somebody's missing you feeling like they may have missed some sort of opportunity. And we have Granite playing you say. So maybe there's going to be something like, you know, he say, she say, or, you know, maybe this person is, is thinking about what something you've said in the past. Because we have Granique saying, you say, and with Black Butterfly is the name of the album. Yeah, that you've transformed. There's, there's been major changes, shifts in your consciousness, in your way of thinking. You have a deeper, more profound understanding of life, of yourself, of your wishes and desires. You have passionate new starts. I feel like things are happening for you in a very, very balanced way because the seeds you've planted are now coming. You know, they're they're harvesting. That's why you have the carnucopia because you, you know, you've sowed in good faith. And that's why carnucopia is here. So that's why I was saying, like, you have some sort of victory and reward. You know, when I see your energy coming out of the gate with the queen of swords, even if you're masculine energy, and then you have the magician, you have, you know, the healer of the ages is how this person sees you. And also the energy opening up the reading. And then, you know, the, the karma card, mama, ma at, this is just saying like, you know, even further clarifying that the seeds that you have planted, you've sown them in good faith. And the wish fulfillment, all of those prayers and petitions, affirmations, all those daily mantras, all that inner work, that soul work, all of that reflection, all of the introspection, all of the onus and accountability and responsibility that you've had to take and make for yourself. The divine has acknowledged it because you didn't allow a circumstance or a situation to to hinder you, block you or to keep you in a victim mindset, you've allowed it to help grow you, heal you, to help you to reach a level of self-mastery. So you've literally turned painful events and circumstances and traumatic experiences you've gone through, through your childhood, through your love ships, through your friendships. It's like you've allowed those situations to transform you in a greater way, opposed to using that as a reason to be bitter or to be hateful or to be negative or to remain a victim. It's like you used it to empower you and you're now in that power and you're now owning it. And that's enlightening and that's invigorating, which is why you're seen as this empress. So on the bottom of the deck, somebody's longing for you. And then this person that's longing for you is the person going through a karmic ending. So they're wrapping up a cycle, realizing, like I said, ain't nobody going to love them like you did. They releasing themselves for some sort of marriage with this contract here. So the contract is up. The jig is up. That karmic relationship is done, done, thin. And now they're on this journey, this voyage to come after you because they feel like they may have missed an opportunity. We have total no one else here. So now someone realizes there's no one else. I was just telling you that this person felt like you were the only one. And now we got no one else. So no one else is going to make them feel the way you made them feel. And so now they're taking action. There may be some distance um, between you and this person because we did see the world card and now we have journey. So this person may have to come towards you, like travel to see you. Uh, there could be like two up to two hours. You could be away from this person. Um, all right. So we got the seven of pentacles and this is what's clarifying the um, completion contract and journey. 
So yeah, somebody definitely feels like they didn't get what they was putting into a connection. Um, no one else was, you know, investing, no one else was sacrificing, no one else was putting forth their time, the effort with the seven of pentacles, clarifying karmic completion, contract and journey. It's like this person felt very unfulfilled, but either way, you know, those seeds that they've sowed, you know, it's still harvesting. So like the hard work that they've put in to a connection, it's like, it's not going to go unnoticed by the divine. So the divine sees someone in tension. The divine sees that someone was all in, but that's why the contract is here because that's like, you know, karma. So as I said, when you sow in good faith, you'll reap what you sow. So there's seven pentacles growing on this tree, which means that, you know, their efforts are not going unnoticed. The divine recognizes that hard work and effort, and they're going to match their fly. We got the king of swords on the bottom of the deck. So there will be some form of clarity um, after releasing themselves from this karmic, because remember, we have karmic completion. So that king of swords on the bottom of the deck is letting me know that someone finally had that epiphany they finally see that they got to free themselves they finally have to take that sword and cut themselves free and purge people places things circumstances relationships situationships whatever they have to free themselves from what was boggling them down anchoring them emotionally or even just mentally financially like just baggage just like you know dead weight you know somebody just feeling like dang like just constantly having somebody around in their ear being deceitful always having to question someone's motives somebody realizes that but I see here with the seven of Pentacles, like I said, nobody else was matching their energy. So with this uh, king of swords, they're also aware that nobody else um, compares to you, you know, and this is somebody that wants to be your lover. So I see the death card just flew out and that's what landed on top. A bunch of cards flew out, but the death card is here on the top. I'm going to put these back in. But yeah, so they're done. They, I feel like they're ready to put that relationship, that karmic relationship, you know, um, you know, behind them and they're ready to come after what they want. Um, they got their eyes set on you, locked in on you. Um, you know, I really feel like this is what they want. So let me get one more card. I just want to further clarify this completion, the six, the contract, the journey. Okay. Did anything flip? No. All right. And the seven of pentacles. Let me get one more card. Thank you, spirit. And we have, I can't make this up. Six of cups. This person from the past, no one else makes them feel like you no one else has them thinking of you all the time this person is really smitten like i said you know they see your transformation how much you've grown i feel both of you have grown have done a lot of growing a lot of evolving but this person has a strong affinity and attraction uh towards you and this is someone that definitely is wanting to come back you know during this mercury retrograde this is somebody that was confused you know, like I said, had a lot of options, but I also feel like you're going to be presented with some options and you're going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to choose wisely. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to choose wisely because I do feel like, you know, there could potentially be some, you know, some some janky energy. You know what I'm saying? That could be kind of like, you know, also um, around because remember, we have this deceit card and, you know, deception is, you know, anybody that got a forked tongue. You know, that Judas, that 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 Fugazi energy, that frenemy, you know, somebody that that's false. So we got Kiki Rowe. This is called go getter. So, yeah, you're somebody's could be jealous of your coins. I just picked up my deck. Look, what we got bam financial freedom and success here. Y'all could use this symbol, you know, in your uh, rituals, magic, you know, rituals to bring forth success, abundance, prosperity to manifest. Somebody could be really jelly because you got. You know, a lot of coins coming in, a lot of abundance, you know, this wish fulfillment. What did I say about somebody penning you some sort of love uh, letter, you know, maybe thinking of you, somebody from your past, somebody who could be like up in their head. You know, maybe this is somebody that just, you know, listens to music that makes them think of you. But I do feel like somebody is like really getting ready to, you know, initiate some sort of contact, you know, whether calling you texting you, emailing you, maybe even writing a letter, penning a letter. I don't know if people do that nowadays, but this is how much they 
are going to show their interests. You know, they're going to really express something. We have jealousy is a sickness, hater alert, stalker alert. So there is, remember, we did see that seven of swords. So you do have some fugazi energy. Maybe this is somebody you're attracting. They may have someone around them hating on them, jealous of them, jealous of them walking away, maybe jealous that they are no longer interested in them. And they know they have some sort of uh, admiration or attraction towards someone else. Maybe they caught wind that, you know, you're the one that they admire and there could be some jealousy some secret competition eyes watching with go-getter um somebody's ready and prepared to come toward you to come after you to go with after what they want um that's why i was picking up like the chair of the chariot uh somebody being more assertive courageous wise like confident now and somebody could be very jealous maybe this is the person that was very you know like this is someone that was really unreliable in the past, kind of flighty because they may have had options because I have the he loves me. He loves me not games mixed signal in my hand. So this is somebody that kind of gave you mixed signals. You wasn't, you know, wasn't really confident in the connection or you didn't really feel confident with how you felt with this person because you didn't feel like you could be safe with them. You couldn't be vulnerable with them. Or maybe this is how they felt like they couldn't be vulnerable with you, um, maybe because they were afraid of their feelings. Uh, we got Bob Baba Ogun breakthroughs victories remember we did see the six of swords and i said there were some breakthroughs and victories some of you all baba ogun could be your spiritual parent maybe you're uh giving offerings uh to baba ogun maybe you're connecting with that uh divine um deity um but he's bringing you some sort of victory breakthroughs i feel like somebody when they communicate or initiate communication with you uh this could lead to that happy ending remember we saw happy ending and that was the number 93 which is 12 which is three which is this energy of the person from the past that is really now reflecting on you know how they felt with go getter they're ready and prepared to come after you to go what they go after what they want and we have, if you have to fake the connection, there isn't one. It's a two-way street. So this is what your person is now pondering. You know, they're looking at the connection, that karmic relationship that they're stuck in. Or maybe if you're still in a karmic relationship, Scorpios, you're looking at the connection you're stuck in. Or you feel stuck and stagnant in. Or you feel anchored and attached to. You know, it's like you're looking at it like this This is not going to work for me. Because, you know, you, you have to go after what you desire. You have to live your truth. You can't let other people live vicariously through you or leech off of you or be an energy vampire. So it's like somebody is like really assessing their situation, which is why, you know, we have the 32 deceit, you know, cause this looks like somebody kind of like analyzing their situation, realizing like I'm lying to myself because this seven, like I said, the, the, the mind is the devil's playground. So this person could be up in their head, seven swords type energy. And with this four of wands, so somebody trying to, trying to fake like they're in this happy family dynamic or happy um, relationship or connection or karmic connection. And they're really like, it's, it's fake. It's, it's not their truth. They're not happy. That's not what they truly desire. That's not what they're truly attracted to. Um, what they desire is you. So they could really be like, you know, having these epiphanies. Um, and so what we have playing right now, can't make this up, is called Thomas. And this is called I wish. So this person is wishing that they never met this karmic there because what he says is I wish I never met her at all. You know, so somebody or even if it's a masculine, they wish they never met this person, this karmic, because what they did was they they had them, you know, kind of weaved them into lies. You know, they, they, they've they been kind of like manipulated, you know, see this, this, this energy here is kind of like holding something in his hand. So that speaks to like manipulation, you know, that speaks to, you know, and with song, it's telling me obviously, um, you know, the song, you know, cause I am clear audience. So it's just kind of reminding me like the song that's playing is gonna, it's gonna fit. It's gonna match. So this is what they was trying to, um, they was trying to live this, this sort of, a, um, you know, trying to live in that reality of the four of wands. Um, but it was more so for show, but it was really fake, you know, and they wish they never met that person. So now we got relax, refresh, recharge on the bottom of the deck. So that's exactly what, you know, some of you all had to do uh, with relax. This is really taking, you know, that time to contemplate you know, to take those internal self audits, to meditate, get things straight. Um, that's what the spirituality is all about. You know, that's sitting in that meditative state, 
you know, if you have like a copper pyramid like I do, you know, you utilize a lot of time in that copper pyramid and receive download, center yourself, ground yourself. And so many of you were doing that. You took that time to, you know, do that re rework, that recharge, that refresh, you know, to hit that reset button. Like I said, there was like a reset. And so that's what's led, you know, to you being in this very refreshed energy, you know, as this queen of cups, because you have spirituality, carnal copia, you have the queen of cups and then relax, refresh, recharge, re re. Uh, came out to clarify those. So that's what you feel. You feel rejuvenated. You know, you feel like you have um, some sort of reset. You know, you feel recharged right now. And so this is a beautiful energy. Um, I feel it also could be because, you know, there's a wish that's being granted with I wish playing by Carl Thomas. I feel like there's a wish being granted and we see clearly that you have carnucopia here. So this carnucopia is truly like, you know, this is like um, fortune, fame, blessings. Um, you're going to be feasting off of that indefinite, like infinitely um, never ends. Like this is like an infinite supply. Um, so there's no need to worry about how this is going to happen or how you're going to manage this or how you're going to be able to maintain because there's like this infinite supply. Carnucopia speaks to a harvest and I feel it's a blessing. It's a reward. It's a wish fulfillment. It's an answered prayer. Um, and so that's beautiful. And it's, it's, you know, obvious because we got our wish. So with be healthy, health is wellness. Someone could be up in their head. Uh, someone could be so much in their head that they were kind of like, like paralyzed um, or mute. They were not communicating. Um, maybe somebody had them up in their head because they was manipulating their energy. With be healthy, health is wellness. I am strongly feeling like mental conflict. Somebody like mind ucking someone, someone gaslighting someone, um, someone just being very, very manipulative, very conniving type of energy. And this is someone kind of taking advantage, like taking someone's kindness for weakness. Someone really utilizing utilizing uh, um, those opportunities to really like sabotage, to really be underhanded, undermined. And so with be healthy, someone is being reminded to, to really have healthier connections, um, to have a healthy relationship with the self first and foremost, because we know that everything that you seek in a partner, it has to first reside within you. It has to be an inside job that you have mastered before you could ever look for someone else to uh, bring that to the table. Otherwise, you're just projecting your insecurities or your your um, your your um, I don't want to call it sickness, but your sickness onto others. But when you are, you know, operating and functioning from a place of self-love, strength and courage, then you truly have that ability to attract that in other people with be healthy. I feel something within this person's surroundings, within their mind, um, and within the dynamic of the relationships, love ships relate and friendships, um, that they had, something was very unhealthy, imbalanced, toxic. That's why the divine was reminding them be healthy. Um, because something was not healthy for them. We have chem, and this is called love calls. So this person was having a nudge. There was this like when love is calling, that's that's like a nudge. There's like yearning. There's a longing. And this is what this person was feeling in the back of their mind, in the back of, you know, their their their, their mind it was always that thought of you, the one that got away. Um, that one person, um, regardless of who they could have been occupying space and time with in that instance, that 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 love that they felt for you was a constant reminder or that urge or that that inkling, um, that that feeling, that yearning, as I said, that that passion, that intensity, it was building, it was building up a momentum. So this person is now realizing like, OK, I'm living a lie here with this deceit in 32. You know, maybe they was hearing songs and it was just telling them you like call Scorpio, reach out to Scorpio, express yourself, you know, whatever it is. It's like something was kind of like constant reminder. Maybe they was hearing, like I said, songs earlier, like just hearing the same song or playing the same song. My throat is getting blocked again. So this is absolutely someone that's not communicating and they could be getting urges, synchronistic, uh, synchronistic, <clears throat> excuse me, messages. Let me drink a little bit of water. Synchronistic messages to 
communicate, to initiate contact. So let's go ahead. Let's let's clarify music, deceit, and the four of wands, and then we're going to wrap it up. Come on, spirit, let's see what we got. So it says you are beauty in every fashion of the word, internal and external. I cannot make this up. So love is calling them and your attraction, the attraction they have towards you, the synergy, the chemistry, the connection. Remember, soul sister, you must be my soul sister is what Bilal was saying in the song. This person is realizing because love is calling them. So you must be their soul sister because love is calling them to you. And why? Because this union, this is a lover's, you know, this is a lover's connection. Like this is a synergy. This is yin yang. You can't fake that. This person cannot fake how they feel. You are beauty in every fashion of the word. This person realizes your beauty internally as well as externally. And this is something that they're drawn to. With go deeper, you haven't scratched the surface. The divine is reminding you to remain very compassionate, non-judgmental, because perhaps there's something that you may not be privy to. Maybe the divine is doing this with the person that's coming towards you, is that they're going to discover that there's some deception around them. They're going to discover that there's some things that they may not know, some secrets. Remember, the lunar eclipse is coming up, and that's what's hidden. It's, it's, it's blocking the sun. The sun illuminates, the sun, and the moon hides. So it's like... There's going to be things that were hidden. So someone's going to need to do some internal work, some soul searching. So this is also trusting intuition. You know, maybe this is how this person sees you is like you went deep. You went within, you know, you really transformed from the inside out. You know, um, why is synchronicity and um, healer of the ages and the magician here? These are all very powerful energies. And we have um, Keisha Cole, enough of no love. That's what you went deep. You had to do that internal deep dive. Like, okay, if it don't sit right in my spirit, then should I still deal with it? Oh, no. Okay, I'm going. Peace. Like, you you, you said, I'm going to love me. Self-love makes me more attractive. I'm going to get me together. I'm going to work on me. I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to evolve. I'm going to move forward, upward and onward. I'm going towards the victories, the success. I'm taking action. I'm creating a safe space. I'm creating a sacred space. Look at this. You plus me. I can't make this up. This is like the lovers. This is what just flew out. I cannot make this up. This is how this person feels about you. Synchronicity, which is 87, which breaks down to 15, which is six. The lovers. You plus me could be the lovers. It could also be the two of cups in my deck because there's dual energy. And that's how it is on even the sun card. So this person, you plus me, this person feels like you are their soulmate, their spirit, their um, soul sister. And enough of no love is saying this person is walking away from this loveless karmic con connection to go towards you because this is where love resides. You are their true yin to their yang, yang to their yin, cosmic companion, kindred spirit, soulmate, twin flame, whatever you want to call it. Enough of no love. They're done with that. That's why the deceit card is here because they've been deceiving themselves, lying to themselves, staying somewhere because of convenience out of convenience we have support system the village people you can trust depend on in crisis see that this is what this person knows about you that you are someone that's reliable remember i was saying something about loyalty you know you're someone very loyal this person sees you as the queen of cups emotionally intelligent available nurturing caring and loyal they also know that you would be a support system, that you would have their back middle front, that you would hold them up, that you would be a ride or die. You would ride till the wheels fall off, pull over to the side of the road, put new tires on and continue the journey. That's what they see in you with healing. This is who they've evolved. Like now they see you clearly because we have the 66 healing and we have the 40 Archangel Metatron, which is the sixth chakra, which is the first eye. So that's six, six, six. And that 666 reduces to 18, which reduces to nine, highest number of change. This person has changed their perspective of you, you know, and they also changed their perspective of this connection. You know, they've rediscovered the hidden secrets. 
the, the, they've, they've discovered, you know, maybe this is even your sensitivity, you know, being able to tap into the unknown, you know, tapping into the unknown and discovering what this person actually feels for you, knowing before they even admit it. Enough of no love. You already knew someone was going through their karmic cycle because this is a cycle that you've just completed. So you mirror the person. That's why the healing is six, six. So now you have this heightened level of sensitivity and intuitive energy. Maybe somebody communicates with you via their dreams. But like I said, there's going to be some sort of, you know, secret exposed. Someone's going to explain something, communicate something. We have believe you can and you will here. So there's really like this is the hope, the optimism. This is leaning on your faith, leaning on your strength. This is like that energy of, of braving your light. Someone kept their eyes on the prize. And like I said, the, 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 the intuitive communication is what kept someone inspired, motivated, encouraged. You know what I'm saying? Because they see this as a wish fulfillment. And we have flowetry here. And this is called blessed to have. So this person realizes they're blessed to have you in their life. They're blessed to have someone such as you. Someone that brought healing, someone that brings happiness, someone that brings joy. This person feels this intense, this intensification, you know, of, of passion, love, the desire to communicate, the desire to, to extend this, this olive branch, to heal this connection. There's just a very strong, passionate, there's a, an attraction like none other. But this is someone that really cherishes you. They feel blessed to have you in their life. They feel blessed. Even though I say bliss, the name of the song is blessed to have. So I'm speaking on that specifically. But they feel blessed, blissed to have you in their life. They feel like you bring, you know, you make them feel brand new. You open up opportunities. You know, you make their lives feel happy, joyful. There's this, you know, they just feel fulfilled invigorated excited you know it's like they don't want to be a, a you know away from you for too long we got family and build connect check in so this person definitely feels like you're their soul family soul tribe like you speak their love language you're their twin flint you belong to them this is this person is going they want to rebuild i heard rebuild because after 37 that that you know 37 reduces to 10 that's an ending you know so what do you do after an ending? You rebuild, you have a restart, you refresh, you recalibrate, rejuvenate, you know. So there's this new start, this new beginning. But there's a new door to personal healing and happiness. And it's leading to a passionate new start. This person really wants to reconnect. They want to check in with you more often. They want to re, re, um, they want to rebuild. I just feel rebuild. I feel like they just want to rebuild because they know how blessed they are to have you in their life or to have someone with the likes of you in their lives. This is something they may have been ignorant to or denying. They was running from something they absolutely desired, longed for, yearned for. But out of pride and ego, which is what we're about to clarify, that's why the connection ultimately, you know, met its fate. With you moving on, working on yourself, setting boundaries, them having to follow suit. And now that's why they're returning towards you, the empress or the emperor, looking for this victory, this breakthrough. And we just saw Baba Ogun say, expect the breakthrough and a victory. We have make your next move your best move. Circles. So someone that was going around and around in circles, someone that, like we saw, was, you know, giving mixed signals, unreliable, flighty, in and out. This person has had some sort of ego death because we're clarifying pride. We're clarifying temple path, six of swords. I mean, the six of wands and the empress. So this person now is being very calculated with what decisions they make. Remember, I said the 12 is showing me like the three of wands. And so now it's like they're they're planning stretch you know, strategizing how to come towards this empress energy. So they don't want to make a buffoonery out of themselves. They don't want to make no, you know, an ass out of themselves. Even if this is a feminine trying to approach that divine masculine, it's like they're being very calculated with that 12. That's the ready, set, go. So you prepare, strategize, then take action. So that's what they're trying to do. They want to make sure so as not to you know, mess up this last chance that they, they see this as, you know, their last window of opportunity. 
you know, they see you in this light. They see you as just very powerful, beautiful, attractive, abundant, just a very beautiful, um, radiant energy. And so this is what they want to do. They want to build. They want to reconnect. I do feel this is someone you may know from your past. This is someone that you can reconnect with. And, you know, maybe if this was a cycle that completed in the past, maybe there's an opportunity of reconciliation, depending upon the circumstance. That's only for a select few. We have second childhood, not on your level. Somebody left the relationship with a karmic because it was an immaturity. Someone was trying to be controlling and, and being very malicious, you know, just overbearing, very like me, 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 I, 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 someone who just felt entitled like a baby, a big whiny baby is what I'm hearing. And so this cycle is over. I felt like somebody was guilt tripping someone also. They was given nothing to the connection, but expecting everything. And this was a relationship that was very daunting. It was very tiresome. And all this person could do going through that is think of you. Think of returning where it felt more like home. It felt more effortless. It felt more organic, genuine. And we have intro, love thing. So this person feels this love thing for you. That's why the Six of Cups is here because someone really discovers like they have this admiration and adoration for you. And this is someone who may have been like, you know, Kind of like, you know, childish in the past, running away when they wanted to run towards, like I said, you know, choosing other options. But now they're sitting in regret. There's heavy regret, remorse, shame. You know, maybe this person's support system, it says support system, the village people you could trust and depend on in crisis. Maybe they didn't have a strong support system. Maybe they was dealing with karmics, you know, karmic parents that really, you know, kind of sabotage their relationships because maybe they didn't want their baby to go off and be in a healthy relationship because they never had one. Or maybe they were dealing with friends who was just jealous and didn't want to see them happy. You know, misery loves company type of situation. But we see here now that this person is really trying to rebuild, you know, and they want to rebuild with someone that they know can sustain and stand the test of time. Not with somebody that's just there for what they can get and then they're doing the bare minimums. I feel like both of y'all dealt with similar situations, um, you know, with with karmic partners. And now there's this, you know, this um, this sh very strong revelation of the love that this person may have for you. I want to get one more message. Why is karmic completion? But this person is ending some sort of cycle with somebody, a marriage or some sort of domestic relationship or you know partnership with someone that was very childish see this they're going after you because your love is one in a million no one can match it y'all got a love thing going on whatever they had going on was an obligation they felt obligated they felt you know like they had to do it they didn't really want to do it we have blocka 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 i think snata so definitely, you know, this person is going to block out something that does not serve their highest good. I see breaking generational curses, yokes, karmic cords. Um, you're powerful and owning it. Congrats. And then feather protection, love um, from your guardian angels. These are the three cards on the bottom of the deck. So someone will block out what no longer serves them. I also feel remember we saw Archangel Mikael. So he is protecting this union. I feel strongly. And remember, I mentioned that he helps you to break those karmic cords, you know, to cut those karmic cords, to break those generational curses, yokes, hexes and spells. And that's what flew out here. So whoever you are blocking or whoever this person is blocking out, whatever karmic completion is meeting its fate, its ending. I feel like once that completes, it's 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 done. Access is denied. Um, the, the curse is, is complete. Whatever spell or hex or whatever someone was doing, it is it is like return to sender. Um, and it's because you have the spiritual protection feather. So your angels, your guides, like I said, they are very uh, instrumental in this union, as I feel that this is a divine connection. A kindred spirit. We heard soul sister playing in the beginning of the reading. And then we heard 
um, music soul child. And I was feeling like this was like a soul mate, um, a yin to your yang, yang to your yin, twin flame, cosmic companion, twin, whatever. It's like, that's the type of union this is. We got love fang. So this person does have a love for you that is beyond measure. Um, and I feel like, you know, because you're the high priestess, you can feel it. You're very sensitive. Um, and with your love is one in a million, no one can match it. This person has had this very strong um, epiphany. They've come to the realization. They had this epiphany. They know uh, just how powerful the connection is. And they're coming after you, baby. They're going to complete this cycle. Um, and we got Faith Evans, love like this. See that? So I, I can't make this up. They've never had a love like this before. And they're coming. Because they maintain, you know, that that hope, that optimism. Remember, we had believe you can and you will. Well, that's what they did. They held on to their faith. They called upon their guides. They sought wise counsel, spoke to the elders, spoke to the matriarchs. They got some good game, you know, soaked up all that wisdom. And now they're taking action and they're doing what they have to do accordingly. You know, cutting off cords so that they could come towards you completely and readily available for you. So my beautiful Scorpios, this is what you have to look forward to. Um, this is a beautiful reading. I feel some of you all, uh, your solar returns could have fallen on November 7th, November 14th. Um, maybe some of you were born on um, November 5th, November 3rd, November 2nd, November 15th, November 6th. November 12th, November 10th, November 9th, November 1st. I'm seeing some of you all could have been born in October 26th. Some of you could have been born on October 27th. 25th, I said already. Oh no, I said 26th, 25th. Yep, those are the ones I see. Um, trust your intuition, Scorpios, because you got the power. You know, and be mindful. Be mindful. Um, remember, you, the divine is saying, make your next move your best move. Um, this is, you know, the energy that you always have to be in. So definitely utilize your intuition. Make decisions utilizing your inner wisdom, your inner gumption, you know, and that will lead you on the right path. Trust your inner gumption always. Never stray from that. Never let anybody convince you to do things that you may not feel like doing. Don't let anybody make you feel guilty for changing your mind. Say, for instance, someone invites you out and you say initially, OK, I think I'll go, you know, um, and then the day of you choose not to go. Um, don't let anybody guilt trip you on the decisions that you make, because there's a reason why you changed your mind and it could very well be something that could have potentially saved your life. Um, there's a lot of stories where people, you know, initially wasn't going to go somewhere and then their friends encouraged them to go and then they never left that place alive. So don't feel guilty. Don't let anybody guilt trip you. A lot of that is, is, you know, you have to be in control. You got to use your own discernment. So if your spirit is telling you, nah, I'll pass, regardless of who it may be that you might have to stand up, you know, you might have to stand somebody up. You may have to like pull out at the last minute. Don't feel guilty for that. You know, if, if that's because you assess the situation and it just didn't feel right, that is your gut instinct telling you to um, avoid that situation. So, you know, you could either co you communicate that, that to someone and let them know, look, I don't do anything unless it sits right in my spirit and my spirit said not to do it. And, and if they don't respect that, then you might need to, you know, assess that relationship because that sounds very entitled. Like somebody feels very entitled to your time, to your energy. So, you know, they, I, I just felt compelled to say that because I feel like, you know, maybe somebody's going to lay it on thick or maybe somebody's going to come to you. Um, and I'm not saying this is the person that's coming into your life. I'm just saying in general, uh, people, everyday people, friends, colleagues, anybody that could be asking you to do things. Um, don't feel like you can't change your mind. OK, don't feel like you can't change your mind um, because you are entitled, you know, and you're not responsible for how anybody else feels about that. You know, I'm not telling you to be 
you know, tactless, <laughs> you know, and, and, and to be out here acting like you ain't got no coof. But I am saying like, you know, don't feel like you're responsible for somebody else's happiness and, and, and comfortability because that is none of your business. Um, but anyway, I digress. I hope that the reading resonated. Um, if you found that it did, please be kind, beloveds. Leave the like, the share, you know, comment down below. I love receiving your messages. Um, I do apologize for this late upload, but, you know, this energy had me all over the place. And um, so I didn't want to do a reading if I wasn't clear and concise with my messages. Um, we do know that Mercury retrograde energy is is very linger. It's lingering. Uh, and I feel the energy already. So I definitely wanted to be more um, coherent in my reading. So I took the time just to make sure that, you know, the messages that come through, come through clear. You know what I'm saying? Can you hear me now? But anyway, my beautiful Scorpios, um, if you are new here, I hope you stay a while, beloveds. And if you are returning, you already know what it is. Love is love is love. Until next time. Send a big fat ashe to you all. Peace.